What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and gals? It is good to have you here on this lovely Monday night. It is 7 p.m. PT on the dot here in Vegas. It's July 10th, 2023. I am excited to play some Star Wars RPG with the homies. This is episode 14 of Star Wars Shattered Frontiers. And we are in a deep, dark, dingy, dank Sith temple on the planet of Ambria. The crew has been through some shit to get to this point. <clears throat> and now they're about to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some cultists. Should be pretty awesome. Should be pretty, pretty cool. Very exciting. I hope you are all doing swell this evening. I do. Yes, I do. Let me put this right there, actually. Yeah, right here. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, good to have you guys here. I just had some dinner. I'm having some tea. I'm chilling, excited for this beautiful session. So let's uh, see how the boys are doing. Also, Warlock teaser video on YouTube right now, courtesy of Iron Mace. If you're a Dark and Darker fan, check it out. Class looks cool. I'm going to try to main it. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's say hi to the boys. Boys! What up? Hello. Yeah, Hello. dude. What's going on? Whoa. Not much. It's good Here to have some Star Wars. Hello, hello. Fuck yeah. It's good to have you guys here, as usual. Tonight is going to be a fun one, ladies. But before we get to tonight, let's roll for Destiny right off the bat before I ask you guys how you're doing. So I just want to see how this yeah. is going to fall really quick because I'm really excited. And I don't feel like waiting. So roll it up, boy. Oh, yeah. Feed me. Oh. oh. You're lame. Oh. Uh. Oh. oh, you better use oh, them. Oh, oh. Uh, that's, that's sexy. Use them. use them. I'm gonna use them. Thank you for that. That feels Do really, it. really good. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> who won the? Who that. won our destiny point last time? Um, that was you last you week. Did. Yeah, you did. That's, what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I thought. No, oh I just couldn't God. remember what if it was hell? me or cocky well, bastard. Was... No, it's just a Nazar episode. That's hilarious. No, it's okay. It's okay. You deserved it last week. You did real good. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Nazar is indeed our MVP from session 13. Session 13 was a cool one. Uh, we'll recap in a minute. But before that, Zarian, how are you, sir? Did you did you get the barley cooked? Got it cooked, just barely. So good. I'm what are you eating? Trying to. Uh, it's a chicken barley broccoli bowl thing. Ooh, that sounds yeah. good. Mm. Yeah. yeah, other than the barley taking forever to cook, but, you know. Sure, sure. Delicious otherwise. Good. And your life is going swell in the last week, hopefully? Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's been good. So, a lot of progress on a number of fronts, mm. so feeling good. Beautiful. Mr. Sticks, how are you? I'm good. Um, just surviving. <laughs> Okay, yeah. that's sad. It was, uh, no, it was just we had staff that were out of town, so we worked a lot. So it was a very rough. It was it was just a long week, very long week. I feel that. Sorry, but sir. we did buy a new refrigeration unit for the restaurant, which will help out the kitchen a lot. So I'm very excited about that. Very exciting. Spend that money as you make it, baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay. Way to make it weird, Jordan. Rival, how are you? I exist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, work, work is fine. I've been helping my my bosses like with logistical stuff instead of hanging out with the kiddos for the most part. Sounds um, great. Oh, that's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> and oh, I've had a migraine for two days. Uh, Jesus. I'm chilling. We're vibing. We're here. Sorry about the migraine. Okay. You know, it just puts him in a murderous mood, so he's ready to kill. Yeah. There you go. 
Mr. Salt of the Morton variety. How are you? I'm thou? good. I'm good. I'm good. No, uh, no complaints. I'm doing better than hmm. some other people here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how is everybody's fourth? Yeah, uneventful, thankfully. Uh, I relaxed all 4th of July. So It was fun. I went to a little barbecue. My uh, lady's friend's house. They have a really nice house and like a pool in the back and like a cabana Ooh. seating area and shit. And they cooked steaks and we brought deviled eggs and it was awesome. It was fun. I love deviled eggs. Smoked some hookah. Nice. Drink some Ooh, brews. Love smoking hookah. Yeah, it was, it was good. I have a hookah. It's a fun time. Nice. Um, I, uh, how, how's, how's Tristan doing, Soma? Cuter than ever. Sure. Yeah. He, uh, we have this like gray plastic car that we can put him in and it has a handle on the back and we can like push him around and drive him around. Hell yeah. and I was pretending like he was chasing me earlier and he was just cracking the fuck up so hard. It was nice. so cute. He wanted to run me over. It was beautiful. Oh my God. It was beautiful. But I had friends <laughs> visit, uh, this past weekend, the past three nights. Um, Ooh. so we went out to, some bars and f got some food and all that fun shit. And then we went to see the show Opium at the Cosmo, the Cosmopolitan. And my friend um, has subbed in as the captain of that show before, like one of the characters, like the host, I suppose. And so he knows a lot of the Opium performers, like all the, like the circus act folks and the comedians and, and whatnot that are in the show. So we got free tickets and like sat near the front row and then went out with some of the performers after to like an old school karaoke bar and got drunk and hung out and smoked weed and it was great. Super nice. fun. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. But nice. beyond that, just chilling, kicking it and shit, you know, try not to get fatter. <laughs> That's I've actually been losing like a shit ton of weight. Shut up. Lost, like, 20 pounds You're shut up <laughs> yeah i haven't been doing it the rewarding way i've been doing it by just not eating and working too much so i gotta get on that diet shit mm -hmm. yeah. intermittent fasting is the only way i've ever lost significant weight really quickly i mean it's like I... one big meal a day or like you have a very small breakfast then you don't eat for like six to eight hours then you eat a big meal and then you don't eat till the next day yeah, that shit's what's up. It does work, yeah. Yeah. Uh, boys, last session, episode 13, you guys set foot on Ambria. The crew landed on Ambria. You guys uh, noticed some seismic activity near your location, so you had to kind of land far away from your destination, a destination that Gideon and Nazar were sort of sensing with the Force. That's kind of how they knew where to go. Um, ship lands. You guys step out. L7 takes control of the ship, and you guys ventured out into the Ambrian wilderness. You walked for a while and then found an old ancient road, which led to an old, uh, you know, village, the ruins of an old village that had been evacuated. And, uh, it was, um, also the scene and nesting grounds of, uh, I suppose, a herd of Neek. And you ended up going to battle with these Neek. The Neek sort of look like Velociraptor, Ostrich, Dinosaur, Reptavian-type creatures. They're quite large. And you ran into those bastards in the ruins of that village. You guys fought them off. Uh, you killed a shitload of them. <laughs> it was... It was pretty hardcore. They kept trying to pounce on you and knock you down and, and rip you apart, but you guys were able to overcome. And um, you did carve up one for some rations. You also put a couple of the carcasses in a container and had L7 fly out and pick some up for some extra rations. You also thought you might need to, uh, to have L7 fly out to rescue you guys, but you guys were okay. And as night fell, you decided maybe it was a good idea to just jump on board the ship as L7 hovered above so that you could sleep in safety on board and then fly back out 
the next day and continue on your journey. So that's what you did. Um, a little cheesy, but it's all right. I get it. I probably would have done the same thing. Uh, you guys, the next morning, were rested up, ate some food, flew back to the village area, landed just north of it, and continued on your journey. Um, Gideon, uh, still using the force as his guide, felt sort of like a darkness, like a weird haze over the location uh, as he became more comfortable with Ambria and his quest. And he started noticing more um, about the pool of the force and its darkness. And uh, you guys continued on. And as you were uh, continuing down that ancient road past the village, uh, Nazar sensed some sort of um, darkness in the force that was racing toward him. He was able to get his friends off of the road, but before he could, a Sith dragon, a Hasis, uh, stumbled upon him, and Nazar was able to calm it down and essentially tame it. So now the Hasis, the dark side dragon, is cool and friendly with Nazar, which is pretty exciting. And Nazar rode on him while the others walked alongside him all the way to the destination that was calling toward them using the Force. And they see a temple carved into the side of a mountain. There's a bunch of cliffs and uh, tall, rocky faces around the temple, but they were able to walk through, get to the entrance, and as they were uh, crossing the bridge to go into the temple, a hooded figure came out of it and warned them to essentially stay away because they were messing with dark forces that they should not be meddling with, that they could not hope to take on themselves. And... Uh, Nazar stated that he didn't serve anyone when asked who he served, which was not the correct answer for this cultist, this shadowy figure. He warned the crew again and then went inside. The crew decided to follow. They went to the temple, and it was infested with a shit load of spiders. Tons of spiders were all over the place in here. And using the force and discipline and... Uh, Bottling their fear, the crew, led by Nazar, was able to work their way through the temple. And they found like a back way and actually ended up going through a false wall and an, a back tunnel into the quarters of some of the cultists that were living here. And they found a couple of cool upgrades. And they came out into the main chamber after hearing the cultists whisper inside. And that is where we pretty much left off. They, they walked in, the cultists are pissed, pissed off that these guys are here. And Nazar essentially said that he's looking for answers, but he knows that he's not going to get it from these guys. And you guys are essentially about to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these cultists. And that's where we begin episode 14. Can we talk about what we spent our XP on? Absolutely. Everyone got experience at the end of last session, and now we can hear what everyone got. Uh, let's start from the top in Discord. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. L. No, I don't remember what I spent it on. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I know what I spent skills. mine on. Yeah. Skills. I spent mine on the improved Armor Master talent, which means as long as I'm wearing an armor that gives me two soak, I am. Uh, I get one defense, which means I get a melee and a range defense. Which means anytime someone wants to hit me, they would roll a black die. Nice. Awesome. That's pretty yes. cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, nice. Nice. I started dipping into my seer tree, uh, which I got uncanny reactions, which gives me a blue dice per rank of uncanny reactions to all vigilance checks, which is really good. And then I got keen eyed, which removes one black dice per rank of keen eyed from perception and vigilance checks. Uh, and it decreases the time to search a specific area by half. So. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. Walter, did you spend your XP on anything this week? I did. I uh, ended up picking up my second skill in the survivalist specialization, and I picked up Outdoorsman, which removes one black per rank of Outdoorsman 
from checks to move through terrain or manage environmental effects. And then uh, decrease overland travel times by half. So nice. you can get through nature much, much faster than I, uh, I bank through a 85. Nice. Beautiful. All right. And with that, why don't we jump into tonight's session? Do it. All right. So the cultists are staring you guys down. The last thing that happened was Laz walked in and made a joke about Bacobi, and it didn't really go over well with these guys. And um, what happens is... Okay, good. This cultist steps forward, as does this one, and he st walks down the stairs in front of him, and he looks over his shoulder at, him, at this cultist here. The scowling cultist, we'll call this guy, looks over his shoulder at the, the red-eyed fanatic and whispers something and looks back and points his finger at Nazar and Gideon, and he says, I pity you. And with that, we're about to roll initiative, but first, this guy is going to get to do something before you guys start. We'll see how it plays out. What he's going to do is he's going to roll a force power. Force power suppress. User may spend two dark pips to add two automatic failures to any force check against him or any ally within short range until the end of his next turn. That is what he's going to do right off the bat. So, that will be bam, bam. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll a... Actually, no. He tries to... Supra... Do I want to do this? Do I want to fucking use a destiny point right off the bat? Maybe I do, actually. You know what? I think I'm going to. I'm going to use the dark side. He is going to take two strain. He's going to flip those to dark. And now, anyone that uses a force power is going to have two automatic failures against him and any cool. of his friends. And now, everyone is going to roll initiative. Oh, cool. What does that look like? So what it looks like is when he whispers into him and, he, and the, this guy says what he says, um, this one sort of uh, looks at uh, the three of you and he closes his eyes and he kind of raises his hand for a second. And I suppose how it could manifest maybe visually and audibly is maybe like a wave of energy sort of emanates from him quickly, like just like a wave of energy with, and it maybe has like an associated warbling sound just for like a second. Uh, and that's it. And then his eyes open back up and his red eyes are uh, slightly glowing. And that's kind of how it looks. Cool. Are we rolling cool? Or... Um, are you guys prepared for battle? Because I thought I figured you guys were. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So everyone's going to be rolling, rolling cool. Um, blue's not supposed to be in there. Take that one. It's just a two. Mine two was blank, so it doesn't matter. Sorry. Uh, no. I mean, I get a. No, we we get. I got a blue because it's still the same day for. Oh, you're right. Track. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So yeah, it's a two one. Good. Good. Ooh. We rolled shit. That's Ooh, done. I can't. What? Okay. Um, the first player can go. Uh, Gideon, do you uh, <laughs> do what you do? Yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna attack this guy. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna run up to this guy, and as I get to him, take my axe out and swing down on him. I thought you had the sword. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have both of them. Oh. Okay. So, so, so what do you want to use? Your axe? I'm, I'm using my axe. <coughs> All right. 
so, let me see here, one second. It's gonna be two R, one black. Nice job, okay. So it's gonna be, let's see here, eight, five, seven damage. What's this guy, does this guy have a weapon? Uh, yes, he is holding a, um, a shittier version of what Nazar has. He's wielding an ancient sword of some kind. Um, so I wanna, with my swing, I wanna have hit that sword, and can I sunder it three times? This sunder one advantage? Mm-hmm. No shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. Let's see here. Sure, you can do that. Okay. So I mean, you I don't know how much he takes, but you shatter his sword. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Straight up breaks. Jesus Christ. And his one of his hands bleeds as the sword falls to the ground and shatters uh, behind him. Okay, next PC. No one objects, I'm going to attack. Uh, I don't hear objections. Okay, I'm going to move up and I'm going to attack the same person. 2R. Now that I see his shit is fucked. So. Okay, 2R. 6, 7, 8, 9 damage. And I'm going to heal one strain and pass blue to the next PC. All right. Whatever it might be. Okay, so first NPC goes, it's this guy. And he falls back and takes the sword from the cultist, the shadowy cultist next to him. And he rushes back to strike at... Gideon is going to take two strain for that. And it's the same sword. This guy no longer has a sword over here. Okay. And that's going to be one black, two P for Gideon, right? Yep, just one black. Okay. He swings and you uh, easily uh, dodge out of the way. And that's that. Uh, the next NPC is going to go. And it is going to be the shadowy guy in the back. What he is going to do is he is going to use force move on Nazar. It's going to be a discipline. discipline. Yep. yep. It's going to be a discipline check with force for this guy. He's got force rating one or two. What does he have? Force rating one. Okay. I believe okay. he's got to out discipline me, I think, is how that works. Yes. Just like an imposed discipline check. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, so he tries to uh, use the force to throw you. And you turn you your head snaps toward him, and you throw up your hand, and his yeah, attempt and I, fails. I look at him and I say, "Not so fast." He takes a step here behind his friend, and it'll be the next NPC now, the red-eyed fanatic. Uh, he is 
going to step forward and attack you, Nazar. That is going to be, what, just 2p, no blacks? Um, no, I have a melee defense, so one black. Oh, that's from your sword, right? Or what's that from? No, it's from my armor. Oh, that's right. I always my forget. new robes. That's right. All right. Ignore the force. He swings at you, and you uh, are able to sort of parry his swing away with your sword, and they clang against each other. Next PC. Well, you want to question us? Um, no, go ahead. <laughs> One of these days you'll go before me so I can figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, <laughs> well, you're standing in the doorway, so I need you to move. Yeah, uh, I look around this room. What's going on here? I move over here and I'm, I'm looking around this room. What's, what's in it? So you're seeing a... Um, the main chamber of this temple. You see uh, some old tomes. You see some lit candles and maybe some old urns. Up here, you see the stat. You see a statue, and there's like a giant, like horned animal on it. And the the statue looks very, very old and brittle, and it also looks very menacing. But it is the main sort of mantelpiece in this main chamber. Right. And time. and are these the tomes here, like that tome right there? Is that like on display? Is it like obviously something that was important to them? Like what are like, you know? This is uh this tome is was probably once important, but it is now rotten through, moldy, and it's probably no longer used by anyone. But it's just still sitting there. Maybe once it was important long ago, and. They don't want to move it because it'll fall apart if they even touch it. All right. Um. I don't know. I guess I'll just do that guy. Which guy? The one in the back. Whoa. This dude. Yeah, yellow guy. Okay, that'll be. That will be one R one E. Because if he's adversary two, but it's only one P, that means it's one R and then one more P, right? That's how it works. Don't know. I think you. Do you upgrade both of them? Sticks? Do you know, Walter? Um, adversary two. Is that uh, two yeah, R? Yeah, 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 it's 2R. It's well, two if R. it's only a 1P shot, though, is it 1R, also, 1P? Also, Soma, just to lawyer against myself, um, I shouldn't have had two blue in that discipline, so I still would have won because I had the triumph, but um, I will change that. Cool. Um, so if it's a 1P action check, and it's a two, an adversary 2, which would mean if it was 2P, it'd be 2R, is it 1R plus 1P? No, it would be it would upgrade both dice. It would be two so, R. Oh, two R. Yeah. Okay, two yeah, R. It'd be two R. Yeah. Right, he's I'm gonna at aim. medium. He's at short. Oh no, he's at short range. That's what I'm trying then, to say. It's a one P. Sorry. Attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one R one P. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. No all right, I'll aim. Yep. All good. Okay, that's nine damage to him. He takes. Off crit. And you will crit. He cries out in pain as you shoot him. Yeah, I think Laz is just looking for something other than fighting. Can't find anything. Quick draws his weapon, just shoots him. Yeah, you shoot yeah, him. As, uh, as like a last kind of ditch thing, because he, he doesn't see like a non-combat thing to do. Yeah, you shoot him square in the chest and he gasps. And now he is compromised. Increased difficulty of all checks by one difficulty die until end of encounter. Brutal. Next PC. So, Schnez was kind of like, 
tucked around the corner a little bit. So all he knows is Laz walked in, said, uh, hey, is this where the Bacobi's at? And then instantaneously heard a bunch of weird warbling, heard like, and saw Gideon and Nazar kind of jump out of his range. Laz stepped forward, hears a gunshot, and he's just going to kind of shift to this side of the door to see what the heck is going on. And I would say do a similar scan that Laz just did. You want me to roll like a perception check to see if I can see the same stuff? Sure. Yeah, it's a two, uh, two P perception. Yeah, you, you notice all the same stuff. If you like peek your head in, you'll see the statue and essentially the same description. Yep. So is the statue self-supporting or is it like chained to the wall or anything like that? It is self-supported. There's like a pedestal under it, but it's very top heavy. The head of it is very large, but it is on a pedestal. So I would like to try to aim for that, seeing that the three kind of cultists are right below it and that it looks a little old and brittle um, to try to knock it forward and potentially land on top of them. Okay, roll me a 1P1 black uh, range light or ranged heavy. Actually, with all these bodies in the way, it's going to be one, two, three black. One P, three black. Okay. Ooh, nice shot. Okay, so oh, what yeah. happens is no one notices that you are peeking into this room. You lean in. You fire your rifle at the statue. The beam, the laser beam goes through all these folks and hits the middle of the forehead of this statue. And what happens next is the statue essentially crumbles into dust. And when the dust clears, what you see is some small, weird looking device sort of floating above the pedestal. And maybe some other some other thing sitting on the pedestal as well. But above it is some weird alien looking artifact, device, you don't know what it is, floating above it. And this cultist, feeling the dust of the statue sort of fall all over him, shouts out in surprise and gives warning to his brethren here and they're pissed. And that's my turn. <laughs> yeah! Okay. That's good. Next that's PC. Good. I would like to attack. All right, Mike. You want to attack, huh? Yes, I would like to attack. Now, Gideon wants to attack this guy, right? Right here, Mike. All right. It's going to be 2R1 black. Okay, I'm going to aim as well. Twice, so I'll take strain. Make sure all your dice are good, so don't put two R, one black, in. two blue, and I have the extra blue from the daily. Oh. All right. Ooh. How does it look when you kill this guy? He is busy looking over his shoulder, gasping that this device has been exposed, and he is distracted as he looks back, and you take advantage of that distraction and you kill him, how does it look? Uh, I give him a, a swift uh, slice to the to the abdomen and he just plops over in two different directions. Nice. Awesome. Next PC. Uh, did I have did I have to use my uh, advantages for that or can I uh, get my strain back? You can get your, you can get your strain back, yep. Um, I'm gonna get strain back, but I'm gonna give Nazar blue as well. I'm gonna get two strain, give Nazar blue. Great, that works. All right, I'm gonna attack a uh, red-eyed guy. Okay, two R, one, one black, blue. and one blue. Yes, You're extra aiming? blue. No, no uh, he gave me a blue, but I guess I should aim. 
or not? Because well I haven't moved. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Gives me three all day. Um. All right, give me one second here to make sure all my stuff is in order. All right. Oops. I hit him, Uh-oh. but I'm going to hit him and crit him, but something bad happens and we'll resolve that in a minute. So, okay. Um, and with my extra advantage, I'm going to pass a blue to uh, the next NPC. Okay, so what happens here is you hit this guy for three damage, but you want to crit, right? Yeah, with my advantages. Okay. With three of them. No problem. Add one setback die to next skill check. He's off balance. But okay. the reason why he's off balance is because he throws his hand up with his sword to try to soften the blow, to try to uh, deflect the blow. And as he throws his hand up, he, actu- he actually cracks his ancient sword into your hilt and your hilt is now damaged two steps oof yikes yeah that's bad okay so it goes to moderate yikes Mm -hmm. so now you have two blacks with many swings yep sure do and now the NPCs will go this NPC he falls back from your sword swing he gathers himself and then he swings back at you Nazar he's gonna have one R one P one black one black and he swings at you he hits you for four do you soak all of it? I don't soak all of it I take one wound okay so you take one wound. I'm also going to roll a destiny point. Well, okay. And using his ability, soft spot, after a successful attack with a non-star ship slash vehicle weapon, may spend a destiny point to add three damage to one hit. You take a total of four Ooh. damage. Yikes. Huge. That's a really cool attack. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, so red eye is... So, so a total of four? So... Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, total of four. Yeah, after your Got soak, it. you take four. Got it. Okay, let's make sure this is. Wait, good. was that a melee attack? Yep. Yes. Uh, let me see if I have anything for that. A parry it. No, I don't have parry. I only have reflect. Oh. Um, nope. Okay. Now the next NPC is gonna go. This is the. Shadowy Fanatic. Once again, he is going to use Force Move. And this time, he is going to throw the man that just killed his fellow cultist. He's going to aim for Gideon here. What do I need to do? You need to roll Discipline against me. And he gets, with his crit, uh, difficulty of all checks increased by one difficulty die. So does that mean that his discipline check is now what one R one P? Or or what is how does that No, look? because it's an opposed discipline, so there's no difficulty on it. So they have to resolve that first. Um and then when you aim with your force attack to try and throw something at him or throw him, then it gets upgraded or it adds one more difficulty dies. Alright, roll your discipline. Uh, just raw. Yep, flat discipline. All right, wow. So he tries to throw you as well, but you look pissed and you feel him reaching out to throw you, but you deny him as well. And he takes Mm -hmm. a step back and gasps and shakes his head and mutters uh, under his breath. And if anyone is close, I guess you two would hear that he's muttering about how he is failing his master. Gideon starts laughing. All right, next PC. Nazar looks over at Gideon and says, stay focused. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to say to this guy here, as Laz, you should just give up now. We've got three more teams outside. 
you're losing badly here. Whatever you're trying to do to to my two uh, two friends over there, it's not working. If you just surrender, well, maybe you don't even have to die. We just ask you some questions and we could all go on our way. Aimed at that guy. That's, that's, uh, I'm just talking to him. What is that? Coercion? Coercion, deception, charm, whatever you want. Whatever you I feel want. Like he is lying. Good. He's so. lying. It's going to be deception, but it's going to be really, really hard. Okay. Because these guys are going to try to fight to the death here. This is... This isn't like some town guards or some gangsters, you know? These are some fucking freaks. So it's going to be a 4P uh, 2 black. Hold on a second. Let me see if I got anything. And I know I can be harsh during combat with this kind of stuff, with these kind of rolls, but sometimes it makes sense, and sometimes it just doesn't. And the dice rolls are just going to be tough, you know? No, I, no I, this is good. This is good. They're religious fanatics. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. If I ever bitched about it before, it's like after I helped save those two's li those two guys' life, and they like were mad at me still. Like what? Hmm? Okay, so I'm going to remove a black with, from uh, with convincing demeanor. Okay. Wow. Yeah, right. That's wild. Oof. If that blue wasn't uh wasn't just blank, maybe maybe it would have been something. That's crazy. Yeah, so this guy uh turns to look at you and he sort of hisses at you. Um but ignores your words. What a crazy roll. Fair. I mean, it's it's all that says fair. <laughs> <laughs> Next PC. <laughs> I mean, what, else, what would you say to like some crazy dude hissing at you? <laughs> yeah. So I say to kids when they do it. Fair enough. You have kids that hiss at you? Yeah, of course. Kids are ridiculous. Jesus. What do you mean? They're children. Children are evil. <laughs> Apparently, they're fucking hissing. T until they hit high school and discover weed, they're awful. <laughs> <laughs> at least in my experience. Uh. Shinez is going to kind of quickly dash out into the room back by what I assume is a vase or an urn back over here. Okay. And he's going to aim and take a shot at the shadowy figure in the back. Okay. Oh, that's Take two strain. It's going to be two R. No black? No black. Two R. Or sorry. One R, one P. We already established that. Oh. One R, one P. My apologies. Yeah, it's a small room. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ, yes. Jesus. You shoot this guy, and he stumbles down to one knee, but he's still alive, and he cries out in pain as your uh, blaster bolt goes clean through his shoulder and strikes the wall behind him. And as that happens, you feel a rumble and a tremor and some dust and a little bit of rock falls from the ceiling and the place shakes for a second and everyone kind of hunkers down for a second and then everything goes calm again what would you like to do with your advantages uh i am going to crit twice and pass a blue holy shit you have enough to pass a blue to a specific person if you want no, he's critting twice. Oh, yeah, he does. So if uh, if you're critting twice, I do critical roll offset, and I type in 20, and then roll crit, right? Yep. Okay. He he is hamstrung, and he falls to his uh, 
to his knee. It's going to be really hard for this guy to move. And he's not looking good, let me tell you. He's not looking good at all. Next PC. I'm going to move up to here and uh, kind of not not the not the back one kill the other one the back one's already fucked up maybe we can get him to talk uh, and i turn and i swing <laughs> with all my might on this guy but you said i could have one <laughs> god damn it i did say that <laughs> i'm uh double aiming is it uh still two r1 black yes Okay. Nine damage. Eleven. Oh, nine with uh, oh, yeah, pierce two. Oh yeah, eleven pierce. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Nine with pierce two. Uh, nine. Eleven. What? What was it up before? Three. So why am I so bad at math tonight? Nine, seven. So it should Eight. be ten, right? Oh yeah, with the with the two pierce. Oh, I don't know what armor is. I think it's eight, so it should be eleven. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you strike into this guy, and what are you doing with the advantages? Um, I mean, does he have any like? Does he have a weapon? Yeah. Can I, can I can I sunder it? Um. Yeah. Okay. I sunder it three times. You destroy his weapon, Sick. and he uh, his weapon shatters and falls to the ground, and he faces you. Next PC. Uh. Um, wow. Well. When when he faces me, Gideon's gonna say, "It's time to give up now." Uh. I'm not gonna let him give up. I'm gonna kill. Oh him. no. Yeah. That, yeah. Go fuck this guy. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, so two red, three black. Um, I oh, don't yeah. have an extra blue. Actually, yeah, I am going to take two. Um, hmm. Yes, I am going to take uh, two strain and double aim. Okay. So I will keep those blues. Roll it up. Triumph and a despair. Fun. Um, so with the triumph, I'm going to hit him. Uh, All right. So and I, I am going to crit him with my three. So how this looks is you raise your sword and he turns back to look at you. And as you are pulling your sword down to strike him, he puts his sword up again. And... The sword's broken. Oh, sorry. Sure. Yeah, he, uh, gonna... he turns and as you strike down on him as your sword cleaves through him it cleaves all the way through and actually hits the stair behind him and uh, the force of the impact reverberates through your sword and it actually shatters your hilt <gasps> your hilt is now broken on your sword okay <gasps> um, this guy is dead okay I, your sword is fine. It's just the hilt is, right. It's like, yeah, obliterated. it's unusable. Yeah, yeah, it's right. unusable. I uh, toss it to the side for now. Okay. So, you can't really wield the sword anymore because you'd be holding a blade, right? Like, you can't really. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, not really exactly. Yeah, like, well, maybe then it. instead of throwing it to the side, I just sheath it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Makes more sense. As this guy sees you kill his two brothers, he steps toward the device floating there. And he looks back and he says to you, failure is not an option. And he quickly pulls a dagger off his belt and stabs himself in the neck. And he chokes on his own blood as he falls to his knees, right. and he dies. As he's dying, as he's dying, 
How is that not a failure? You're killing that, yourself. That's that just is, sad. That's literally what failure is. Like, lost. do you not know what failure is? His hood. You could have lived. His hood falls off his head, and he smiles. His rotten teeth stained with blood. He has a big smile on his face. His blood trickles out of his mouth, and he says, "Failure is not an option with him." And then he falls forward and dies. That dude failed. Yeah, he, he definitely failed, Laz. Um, I want. <laughs> Hold on. I want... Uh, hold on. Before I see you walk up to the effigy <laughs> yeah, yeah. or the pillar or whatever, and I say, "Hold, Gideon." What? Do not reach out for artifacts. <laughs> they may be trapped. Tell me not to touch the floating object, Nazar. No. Do not touch it. But it's floating. I'm going to walk up, and I'm going to look over at the object. Um, can I make some sort of, like, lore check or something to determine what this object is? Yes, with your force die in the pool, roll me a uh, 3p1 blue uh, lore check. Lore. There's no way I could trouble roll this. Well, I succeeded, but the force didn't help me at all. Okay, that's fine. So, you know this to be a holocron that is floating there. And give me a 2P perception as well with Gideon's two blues mm -hmm. as you're standing there. Okay. Um, take a couple of strain as um, you're sort of enamored and almost blinded by this holocron as it's calling to you, Nazar. But what you do notice is you're able to look away just for a second. And on the pedestal, there is an item below the holocron. And it is a beautiful, one-of-a-kind looking ceremonial Sith crossguard hilt. It is a curved reflex grip hilt. And it is, it is uh, adorned with ceremonial... Uh, Sith gems and artifact and uh, uh, markings on it. It has a cross guard as well on it, but no blade. Ooh. So it's ridiculous that you got two fucking despairs and I was able <laughs> to use those tonight because holy shit, that's beautiful. And I can't even believe nice. it. But anyway, you see this, uh, this ancient, beautiful Sith cross guard hilt. All right. Um, Am I able to determine if there's any sort of sorcery or trap on this? Um, what would that rule be? Let's see here. Uh, let me see here. What would that rule be? Second. Okay, it's got a tricky one. Because I'm assuming this thing is like magically trapped, not conventionally. What the so. fuck? Give me a just like a flat um, 2p vigilance check. Okay. Um, let me. And, and with one black as well. 2p, one black vigilance as you um, okay. see this beautiful um, holocron floating. You see this hilt. You're excited about it but you know you need to be cautious. Okay. Um, I do get one blue from Uncanny Reactions. Good. And um, Gideon, do I get any Vigilance stuff from you? I thought yours was Perception of Vigilance. But Let I me check, that. please. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, it's it Vigilance. Okay. So I get three blues on top of my one blue already, and mm -hmm. it's two purple, one black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see it. Okay. So there's no traps, and as you look for traps, you hear a whisper from the holocron, and it's not real. It's not actual words or spoken language, but you still understand it somehow, as it speaks to you through the force. 
and it beckons for you, the holocron beckons for you to reach out and touch it. Do you I think I do you reach I out? I think yeah, I think I do like um, instinctively. Okay, before you, before I'm you... gonna grab his hand if he does. I'm not yeah. gonna let him touch it. Okay, okay. So when you grab his hand That's fine. when you grab his hand as you're reaching for it, you both hear through the force a whisper and it it says together and it beckons for you to touch it together. I lock eyes with Gideon and I say and we kiss. <laughs> yeah, and we wow. kiss. Yeah. And then there's Deviant Art fanfic everywhere. Oh, um Jesus. So <laughs> uh no, um I do lock eyes with him and I say together it is. And I motion yeah. and I like cock my head to the side and I motion yeah. for him to reach with me. I do. Okay. As we reach out together. As you reach out together and you touch the holocron, the second even just one skin cell touches this holocron, you both are brought to another place. Not physically, but mentally in your minds. You were instantly transported, curiously, to the same room that you're in. But it looks different. The coloration's different. There's something weird about it. And you are essentially inside the holocron, in a way. And what you see, and you're alone, by the way. Neither, you guys are in this room together on roll 20, but in reality, in the actual game itself, you guys are alone. So Gideon, you're in a room alone. Nazar, you are in a room alone. And what you see is yourself. Whoa. What do I look like? Exactly you. like you. Oh, it's like straight up mirror image. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's fucked up. So Gideon, you're standing here alone. Nazar is gone. And you see yourself staring back at you. Nazar, the same for you. You were standing in the same chamber you were just in, but everyone else is gone. You're alone and you were staring at yourself. And as you're staring at yourselves, they unsheath their weapons. Nazar, your mere self, unsheaths an ancient Sith sword, the one that pretty much just broke. And Gideon, you see the vibro sword, the great sword, drawn, and he takes a step forward down the down the stairs and he smiles wickedly at you we're gonna have gideon go first here we'll get to nazar in a second what would you like to do gideon oh shit i get to go first oh that's fucked up he took his sword out and he smiles wickedly at you and takes a step forward with his sword drawn Mm, that's spooky. Uh, I'm gonna take my axe out. Okay. And I'll smile back as I walk up to him. How far can I go in one action? I mean, you could walk right up to him if you wanted to. Yeah. Does he let me walk up to him or does he walk with me? He's standing there. As he sees you walk, he doesn't move. I get up to him, okay. and I'm kind of sizing him up. It's me, but I'm, si I'm sizing me up. <laughs> and all right, I sw uh, hmm? No, I was gonna say all right. You can do that. <laughs> um, and I swing at him. You attack him, okay? Yeah, I attack him. I want to see what happens. All right. So how this is gonna work? is you are going to fight yourself and you're going to be rolling yeah. both for yourself and your mirror image. So the first roll is going to be whatever your defense is, all the stats are going to be the same. So whenever someone tries to attack you okay. with a melee weapon, that's what it is for him and for you. So you're just <laughs> rolling back and forth and we're going to see who can kill who first. Oh shit, does he start? If he's a mirror image, he has my wounds and my strain right now? Um, in this place, 
You are completely reset with strain and health. Okay, doing that right now. I was at I was I at three four. Same. I'm gonna have it. Yep. I will put a note of that in the Discord. Yeah. So what would your typical roll be? It'd be two P one black. Um Or if someone was trying to hit you with melee? Yeah. Uh if I have the sword out, it'd be two black. You're using your axe though. He's using the sword though. Oh yeah, so it's two P two black against him. Two P, it's two black. Um okay. And then I can't aim. Uh this is a strain to hit him, right? Uh you can aim with, with strain, two strain. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. So I have a blue as well. Alright. So Viper Axe against two blue, two purple. Or two purple, two black, one blue. Here we go. Okay. So you do let's see your ten damage. What's your soak typically, sorry? My soak is eight. You have eight soak. I have two pierce. Yeah, so that's ten. Two, so what, four damage? You do four damage to him. Uh, can I crit him? Yes, you can. You got to roll crit on your sheet. It's <laughs> going to get a little weird. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'm good. Just roll crit. Okay, he loses a free Oh, you have vicious three. It's oh, oh yeah, so it should be, be thirty. Yeah, so heal that and re-roll it. Yeah, okay. exactly. Heal. Plus 30. Uh, so just put 30 in the offset roll. Yeah. You knock him down. Fuck yeah. Okay. And he get, and he gets one strain. Do I, do I just heal this now? Heal what? The crit? Yeah, you'll just have to keep track of your offset. Because if he crits you, it'll get or do really you, confusing. Or do you want me to keep the crit? Keep the crit. Summer. Yeah, just keep, keep, it? Okay. keep the crit. Okay. And we'll just ignore it for yourself, obviously. Okay, All right, now you need to off. roll his attack against you, but what he needs to do first is he stands up, which takes one of his maneuvers. And then he is going to uh, attack you. So it's going to be 2P. Okay. One black. One black. Okay, um, combat. He's using the sword. 2P, one black. Um. Does he get my daily blue? No. I will turn that off then. Yeah. Roll. You swing at him, and kind of like Neo in the Matrix, his he just kind of like bends backwards, and the sword swing sails. That's him right. swinging it. He's him. he's hitting me. He's hitting me. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah. Go Shit's ahead. It's gonna get weird. Yeah, I need to keep track of this better. So he just misses. What does that look like? Yep, he misses you. Okay. Now you swing back at him, or whatever you want to do. What are you doing next? Yeah. Uh, two. I'm gonna aim twice, um, and just fucking hit him. Okay. I'm gonna sunder his weapon three times. In here, it does nothing. Okay. You try. Like it, I, it noticeably does no damage to his weapon. Exactly. Got it. So that's 11, that's 3, plus 2, that's 5, 9. Okay. Now he's attacking you. Go for it. Uh, did you, you added the pierce 2 to that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, 2 purple, 1 black. Is he aiming? No. Okay. Take this off. Yikers. He hits nine. you for so he takes 9, one. 10, let's see. 10? Uh, nine damage. That's one plus two. He hits you for three damage. Yeah. Yep. What's your total health? Uh, 21. 21 wounds, 18 strain. All right, you still have a lot to go on this guy. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And keep going. Okay. Uh, double crit. Uh, so it'll be yeah. 50. Well, you just put 20. Or no, double crit. That's vicious three on each crit. So 
No, it that's wouldn't like, it be? No, it's five total. The offset is just 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah. So critical it's rolls fucking... 50. What's do, What do I put for a critical number? Anything or just? No, nothing. Okay. Just do 50 Here we go. in the offset. Yeah. Okay. One no, second. but it didn't count the previous 30. So that's a problem. How do you so, go about doing that, Sticks? Um. Well, he rolled a one, so you're just basically gonna add eighty. So it's whatever eighty-one is. You yeah. just What's... heal the heal this slightly dazed, and then just put eighty-one, 81 in. Yep. Exactly. And then just do that. Or the critical number. Yeah. With no offset. Correct. Yep, that's right. Just so it has the effect. Cannot voluntarily suffer strain to activate abilities or gain additional maneuvers until end of encounter. Okay, cool. Yep. Got it. Yeah, so next time we are going to have to do it the way I said before, where you put like the total amount of offset because it's not counting for some reason. Okay. It's fine. All right. Keep going. Uh, he's hitting me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um... time what he does is he um, moves this way and he's on the stair next to you. And now he attacks uh, as he moves by you. I see, like, kind of, kind of side Yeah. Okay. And you were able to dodge his attack as you as he swings at you. Um, when I notice my uh, like my axe didn't really do anything to his sword, I'm gonna get kind of frustrated. And as he sidesteps and tries to hit me, I'm gonna kind of angrily swing to the right, kind of haphazardly. Okay, no problem. Nice. <laughs> I'm a crow. That's fourteen. Six, he takes eight damage. 16, Jesus. Very good. And you're gonna crit him again, so that's gonna be a 40. So if it's 81, what do we just roll? Do we see what 121 is, or how do we do it, Sticks? So he crit again. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see, he gets one crit, vicious three, so that's like 40 on top of the 80 that he had before, so just put 120 in the thing. In the offset or the yeah, number? Yeah, in the offset and then just roll it. All right. And as he walks down <laughs> these stairs and you quickly swing the axe to your right as he's facing you, you swing toward him. And as your axe is about to behead him, he smiles wickedly at you and laughs, laughs as he disappears. And he turns into a wisp of smoke and he is no more. And everything goes black for you. Yep. Nazar. Yeah. We're going to have the same scenario. You see yourself, you're alone. In this chamber in the Sith Temple. And you see yourself, and he steps forward down the stairs. And he stands on the last step. And he looks at you, and he gives you a wicked smile. And cocks an eyebrow and tilts his head at you as he takes out his sword and lifts the sword and he points it at you and smiles again. Interesting. What to do, what to do. I think I want to try and do a coercion check. Um, it's going to be a little weird. I want to basically try and talk to my spirit self. Um, I want to say something to the fact of be gone spirit. And the problem is I have to upgrade the difficulty uh, of this because I have nobody's fool. So it's going to be uh, whatever the difficulty you think it would be. Um, it gets upgraded once. So it's going to be a 5P coercion check. Okay, so that's uh, one red, four purple. Yeah. 
Okay, hold on. Let me see if I have anything on my end that buffs my coercion. Yes, I had one blue dice. I already have that in there from Sense Emotions. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, okay. Oh. Triumph. All right, so how this is going to play out is I imagine you're coercing him as you step forward. Yes. And give me a good speech here. Okay. Okay, kind of got to wing it. Um, As you're walking toward him, coerce this fool. Yeah, I walk toward him and I say, you are a figment of the Force. I am a master of the Force. There is nothing that I cannot do. You stand no chance against me, and you know it. This is some sort of test, as I believe it to be. Then, it shall not necessarily be settled by might of arms alone. The strength of one's mind is of utmost importance. Therefore, I say to you, be gone, spirit. I have no fear of you, I have no fear of this place. And no fear of the power in which is trapped inside. Be gone! And I shout that super loud. I imagine it like echoes. Yes, you have walked up to him to say that. And he's standing on the step above you. And he starts to lower his sword hand as you're saying these words. And his smile fades. And after you say that, he sort of looks down for a second... Then he looks back up with a wicked grin and he goes to slice you with the sword. But what I'm, we're going to do here with your triumph is you are going to have an uncontested with discipline free shot at force move to show him that you mean business, that you are powerful with the force. So you're going to get an uncontested force throw. Let's see it. Okay. What's the difficulty? It's going to be 1p. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my free destiny point to flip those. Take okay. two strain. Turn dark side so I can actually move them. What's your total HP again? Uh, my total HP is 14, and it's 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I have three soaks, so it's exactly 14. Perfect. It's a one-shot. So shot. what you do is you pick him up as he's swinging his sword at you, and his body lurches into the air a few feet off the ground, and you toss him into the effigy here, the statue that still exists within this holocron world its eyes glowing green and you throw your mirror self into it and as his body connects with this statue head as it explodes into dust he turns into smoke and disappears and the last thing you see as he dissipates in the smoke is a wicked grin on his face looking at you as your mirror self dissipates and everything goes black for you, good sir. So what do we see out here as this is all happening? What you see is the two of these guys touching this holocron. And they both go stiff for about a second. But it doesn't seem like anything happens. And then suddenly they snap back into reality. And they kind of like shiver for a second, but it's like nothing happened. They just touched it, and then they just... You guys snap back into reality, of course. And that fight took, you know, a couple minutes for the, each of you. But what Schnez and Les, Les see is just you guys touch it, freeze for a second, and that's it. Now you guys are back in reality. It's like no time has passed. As soon as I snap back, my eyes catch the gleam of the hilt, and I grab it. I'd like to think that you use move and it, you just f have it fly to your hand. Sure. Sounds cool. I'll take it. Okay. 
And as you do that, the holocron falls to the pedestal as well. And what you hear, give me a second, hold on. Second. As the holocron falls to the pedestal, you hear another whisper. And it's the force, without any words, it's essentially the force through the holocron saying that this holocron belongs to you both because there is always two. Nice. And it is sitting on the pedestal before the two of you. Okay. Can I open it? When you pick it up, the second you touch it, there is once again a tremor from the seismic activity. But this time, it's not just a tremor. It is like the beginnings of a quake. This There is massive shaking and um, a big rock from above on the ceiling falls to the ground and actually hits the uh, shadowy cultist in the head and his head splats <laughs> as this rock falls on it okay. and uh, his robes below. Give me a 3P perception check, Nazar. One black as well as this room starts to quake. But don't forget you get 2P or sorry, two blue from Gideon as well. Yep. All Ooh, right. As the room starts to shake and dust falls and chunks of rock fall, you notice that there is something like a small little bulgy thing in this guy's robe pocket. I'm going to try and retrieve that. Yeah, you can quickly run over to it. Some more rocks fall. And you see there's a, a very old communicator in his pocket. I grab it. You and grab then it. I turn to the rest of the room and I say, we need to go now. All right. So I need everyone. Are you guys going to try to run out of this place? Yep. All right. Everyone roll me a 2P athletics check and a 2P acrobatics check. Or uh, not acrobatics, coordination, rather. I'm thinking fucking D&D. &D. Okay, there's my athletics. Good. Um, Give me a coordination. It's going to be bad. It's fine. I fail. That's, no, that's fine. Keep going. All right, so um, as Laz and Nazar are running out, um, Laz, you are going to take, you passed coordination, but failed. Oh, yeah, you didn't actually fail. So Laz, take uh, two strain on your way out. Nazar, take one wound on your way out as you get hit with rocks on the way out. Schnez, um, you take, let's see, athletics. You're going to take one wound and two strain as you run out, Schnez. I think Rival is okay at the moment. I don't know why that's just why he hasn't rolled. Okay. Um, you could probably roll it somewhere. How long ago did he walk away? Um, a minute ago. Yeah, not, yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. I just sent him a message, though. Okay, well, let's just do this. You have the power. So it's going to be coordination and athletics. So bam. Whoa. Bam. So he's going to take Okay. Something. He is going to take one wound on the way out. 
Okay. Nice. And as we're running out, I'm going to hail the ship. Yeah, so as you guys are running out, um, why you rolled those checks is this place is falling apart as you're running out. The spiders are also fleeing. They're freaking out. They're worried about their own safety. They don't even care about you guys. But what you're trying to do is get out of here as fast as you can without being crushed, essentially. Right. And right. you do take a little bit of damage from falling rocks and debris, but you are able to, after a couple of minutes, uh, run out of the temple. You get to the temple entrance and you all run out. And as you're running out, you see the entrance way actually sort of crumble and a giant rock slides down the mountain and falls right in the entrance way. And as the bottom of it hits, it starts to tip over and the top of the rock lands right in front of you, Gideon, just barely missing you. And you notice that the bridge is also starting to give way and fall into a chasm below. So you guys uh, run off the bridge as soon as you can. As you clear the bridge, the bridge also falls into the chasm below. And you continue going, running away as fast as you can back to the road, trying to clear the mountains. And as you get to the road, now things are, let's get rid of, actually, let's not get rid of that. Um, as you guys are running back to the road, you see the Hissis sitting up on this cliff, and it looks very worried, uh, Nazar, as the world, as, as the earth quakes under its feet. And as, as you're staring at it, and it's staring at you, L7 comes flying in, and he hovers right here above the road, and he lowers the access gate, but he cannot land. And you guys are able to, well, what do you guys do? Pretend the ship is right here. Um, and L7 says in binary, quickly. Schnez, I mean, sorry, not Schnez. I'm not Schnez. I'm last. Last runs, jumps in, and runs to the uh, cockpit. Okay, um, uh, roll me a uh, 2P athletics, please. Okay, you uh, run to jump on board the ship. He's hovering above the ground. It's not a, it's, you know, it's a bit of a jump, right? It's not going to be, he's not landing, so he can't just walk on board. And as you jump, you actually fail to jump all the way up. Take two strain, but what I can allow is Nazar, if you want to use the force yeah, to lift him up into the ship, you can do so. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, let me just roll force die flat. Yep. Oof. Um, I'm going to use our last destiny point to make that happen. Take two strain as well. Oh, whoops. I did, fuck. I did not no, mean to do that. That's okay. All, all that happens is um, you take two strain and all those pips are now black and you're able to just, uh, as he falls to the ground, you, he suddenly feels himself get picked up and you float him into the under the ramp and you are now yeah. good to go less yeah uh, i'm running into the cockpit and taking over piloting because i think i'm a better pilot than you are pilot. yeah you are okay um you are is there give me a is there one second give me a 2p piloting space check one with one black Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, something's not, right. Something's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I put it somewhere else. Hold on. I'm going to reroll that. Jesus. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm no, done rolling. It, no, it's okay. <laughs> so basically what happens is you can't get the ship any lower, but you can keep it steady enough so that whenever anyone else tries to jump on, there's no black now. So that's all it was. So you did good. You just couldn't get any lower. Um, what do the rest of you do? 
And at this point, um, the, you can feel the fear of this assist sort of radiating off of it, Nazar, as it looks at you and looks around. And is Since it's sort of, on an elevated thing, is there any way we could rotate the ship so it can go into our cargo hold? Oh, man, I don't know if that would even fit. That's up to you. That's why I'm asking. So you're going to need a bigger ship to be able to okay. take this guy off world. But depending on what you do here, maybe he'll remember you. Maybe you can tell him to wait for you. It's, I mean, it's kind of up to you how you want to handle this situation. Yeah, but... I think the best thing I can do is uh, kind of tell it through the force that I'll be back for him. I have a question. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is it, does it look like it's just this area that is shitty? All around. There's like a big like earthquake the whole, happening. the whole moon or world of Ambria? Oh, no, it's just like this, this area, whatever these massive tectonic okay. plates are in this area so, of the world. If we left the back open, could the Hisses fit in and we can fly him somewhere else and drop him off? Unfortunately Ooh, not. The, the okay. ramp is, he's so much bigger than the ramp. Got it. Yeah. I, I, there's a part of me that wants to say yes. It just doesn't make sense, unfortunately. He's too big. That's fine. But yeah, I'm just basically going <laughs> to... I'm just going to tell him uh, through the force that, you know, to hide and get to safety, but I'll be back for him. Roll me a uh, discipline check and a survival check with force, 2p each. Okay. Discipline, 2p... Not 22. That would be hilarious. Not 22. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, the force worked, but the discipline did. No, that's, that's, um, that's, that's fine. So now the survival. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's also two purple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, not so much on that one. Yes, yeah, so you tell him to run and hide and that you'll be back. And it kind of believes you. It feels a little betrayed, but it knows that you're trying to help it. So it stares at you for a second, and then it runs off away okay. from the mountains. All right. Hopefully to safety. No, I want to help people get onto the fucking ship. So if you just want to help everyone on, you can. I'll say you can just use the force, and then you have to jump up yourself. Someone can like reach out to help you up though and assist you. Wow. So if you um, want to force move Schnez and Gideon on board, you can do that. Uh, that's fine as an incidental. And now you need to make me a two P athletics check, but you can also get help from Gideon or Schnez. If they reach out to help you up. So maybe Gideon with athletics assisting you with your athletics. Sure. Can I actually Start. try before getting force boosted to sure. get up on yeah. my own? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Just 2P Start. athletics? Yep, that's it. Yeah, you easily do it. Just take one strain because it's. I'm actually going to try because I, I feel like using the force to help people is probably better. Um, I'm just going to roll the 2P. E, shit. I don't have force jump, so ignore the dice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I only get an advantage. So yeah, you don't jump on board, Gideon. What do you do? Do you try to jump on? Yeah, I'll jump. I'll jump on. What is it? Two P athletics. Athletics. You easily jump on, and now Nazar he needs assistance jumping on and and getting up. So. Gideon or Schnez would have to use athletics to aid Nazar's athletics check. I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just add one rank because you have a yellow in it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now I get on with Gideon's help. Yeah, you jump up and Gideon outreaches his hand. You grab his hand and you're able to easily get on board the ship. You guys uh, run into... Uh, the ship as the access door closes behind you and um, Laz seeing that the door is closed starts to fly away from this area and as you guys 
are flying away from the temple and getting higher and higher into the sky. Laz, you see out of the cockpit as you slow the ship and turn back toward um, the mountain range, you see the quake come to a head and there is um, a massive tremor and the seismic activity goes bonkers and the mountain actually starts to fall into itself. The temple is decimated and falls into a giant chasm as two plates erupt into one another and the mountains are essentially reforming and anything there falls into the planet into some chasm and it is a massive area of the planet as you fly in to the atmosphere um, I, I totally failed <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to activate the communicator before we leave atmosphere. Okay. So as you're sta standing in, let me see here. Give me a second. I go into my private quarters to do this. Yeah. You rush to your private quarters, which is fine. Go ahead. Yeah. I just run over to here. I sit in the chair and then I turn on the communicator and say, your men have failed. We will find you. You don't get an answer. You speak into it, but nothing happens. Okay. And that's that. Laz okay. is in the cockpit. L7's behind you. Okay. And do you leave Ambria? Like, what do you what do you want to do here, Les and crew? I'm waiting for uh, instructions. Uh, I'll over the comms. Are we? Uh, are we done here? I think for a minute, and then I look down at the holocron, look at the communicator, and I say, "Yes, I think so." Let's head back to Onderon to refuel. Okay, you guys. will head. Shed will head up to the cockpit and uh, just kind of strap in to assist Laz in anything that he needs. Wonderful. You guys leave Ambria. You see it shrinking behind you as you hurtle back to Onderon. At this point, you guys have been gone for, I don't know, two, three days. By the time you get back, it's going to take several hours. Go ahead and roll me a 2P. Piloting space check, please, Les. I don't know. Come on. Don't be a wuss. I can assist you if you need it. Yeah, so you know exactly what to do, where to go, and you set the controls for Onderon, Casalti Station, and it's going to be like a six-hour flight for you guys, and you leave Ambria behind on the Ashen Angel. And we're gonna take a break now for 10 minutes. Come back at 8.43, and we will continue with episode 14 of Star Wars Shattered Frontiers. See you in a few.
All right, all right. What up, nerd? I'm back from the break. Let's see here. I think we're all good to go. Let's see if the boys are ready. Like, What's uh, up, boys? Nope. What's up? All right. Well, that was a action-packed, crazy for you know first half or so of the session. Yeah. Shit. Crazy. Is everyone back? Uh, I haven't heard from Walter, but I think everyone else is. Yep, just back. Oh, cool. Rival, you're good. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's jump right back into it. So, you guys are hurtling away from Ambria, flying back to Andron. You guys have several hours before you get back. So you leave the atmosphere. You hurdle through space, and you guys can RP or do whatever on your trip back. Um, before anyone has the chance to interrupt me, um, I do want to try and see what the Holocron has to offer. Um, Slightly selfishly. Okay. But if it won't work for me, then that's fine, too. For just uh, me, I should rephrase. So... second there's two reasons i'm doing this by myself one if it's like actually dangerous i'd rather take the brunt because i believe myself to be stronger in the force than gideon at this point whether that's true or not um but yeah so before you even um get a chance to touch it as you you know you're selfishly trying to look at this holocron by yourself in your quarters Instead, as you reach for it, the holocron actually sort of communicates to you via the force as it has, and you feel a draw to the star chart. And I think Gideon has that in his quarters. So you kind of now you kind of have you're forced to maybe connect Perfect. with Gideon. All right, um, then I'm just gonna stand up, open my door. Gideon, are you outside my my quarters like that? <laughs> Uh, it's I fine was, if you are. I'm just. It's, I'm just I was gonna. Yeah, I'll be right here. That's fine. Yeah, so I open the doors and Gideon's there, and I say, "Ah, oh, Gideon, I think it's time that we use all of our means to see what we can. Well, see. You still have the star chart, yes. Gideon nods uh, with the questioning look on his face I believe this holocron and that star chart are linked shall we go to the galley and grab a seat sure uh, should I go get the star chart yes please okay yeah. and I'm going to go over here and sit at the table mm -hmm. the Dejaric table whoa okay and I set the holocron on the table. All right. So you guys slap the holocron down on the table um, next to the star chart. And the star mm -hmm. chart's out. And the holocron, when you set it on the table next to the star chart, it actually, almost as if it's a magnet, if they're magnetized, um, the holocron flings toward the star chart and it sets itself over where Ambria would be on the star chart and as soon as it stops moving at its spot on the star chart you see some other locations start to glow on the star chart yeah all right um, am i able to read the chart am i able to find out what these plans are yes it is clear as day in front of you as you were looking mm -hmm at the star chart mm -hmm. but there are four other i guess locations on the star chart that are now glowing and i'm gonna need some knowledge outer rim knowledge core worlds roles from both of you as you guys try to interpret what this difficulty 
Um, do you have that as a career skill? One of them? Outer. So outer, outer. it's going to be just two P. Okay. And I'll give you a blue as an assist. Okay. Okay. Now roll me the core worlds as well. Uh, same or it's not a career. Three P. Three P. Blue. Okay. I'm still okay. helping. Okay. Nice. Yeah, you guys look it over and suddenly you both kind of realize what this is and you look at each other at the same time and then look back down and the following worlds have now been highlighted. Corvus. How do you spell that? C-O-R-V-U-S. You would know that planet. Corvus from the mandalorian that is where Whoa. the mando fights ahsoka outside the city of caladan Whoa. Got it. um another planet lights up Car delba and then a place that you've never seen before in any other star chart either of you is also glowing it's called Kreis two uh, that's K R A Y I S S, I believe. Yeah. Cray I S S, yeah. Cray with a K. That's in Sith space. Um, anyway, and sorry, that was out of knowledge. All good. So, Cardelba, Corvus, Kreis 2, Kreis. and the final world is Coruscant. Okay. Um,. That's it when it comes to the star chart. If you remove the holocron from the star chart, it stops glowing. Yeah. Do you remove it from the star chart? It um, does. As soon as we note the planets, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah, I think we should. Okay, so... Does, does it react to me touching it? Not yet. So okay. as you remove it from the star chart, you don't really need the star chart now. You kind of know what to do and where to go. Um, it's still very valuable, obviously. Um, but the holocron is sitting in between you, and it whispers once again, together. I look at Gideon and reach out for the holocron. Uh, can we, like, uh, whatever. Yeah, do it. What's your question? No, never mind. Okay. So you guys touch the holocron, and now you can gain its power, its lessons, all that fun mm -hmm. stuff. So now I'm going to go over the info that you guys learn from this holocron. Okay. So as you guys access the holocron, um, a uh, hooded figure sort of steps forward and takes his hood off, and it is... Um, an old looking human and the human goes on to explain that he is a devout follower of Frieden Nad and that this is one of his holocrons he explains that the location of this holocron was a place where some of Nad's remains were left ages ago and he's speaking as if you guys would be in that room obviously you're not and he says that while his known burial site is on Duxon, Frieden had his tomb on Ambria because it was a temple where he trained his, mo his most uh, devout Force-sensitive followers. And he wanted uh, some of his remains to be laid to rest at a place where his most loyal followers devoted themselves to him the deepest. Then you guys go on to learn a little bit about Frieden Nad. You learn that he was a Jedi prodigy, and that he learned the ways of the Sith on Korriban and Ashes Re, where he studied a holocron himself that was created by a Sith pureblood named King Adis. I don't know if it's Adis or Adis. I've been saying Adis. I think it's Adis. But is it, is that's it Adis? Fine. Yeah. yeah. King yeah. Adis. Yep. I didn't know what it was, but Adis is great. I knew it was one of the two. Um, you learn that this Addis unified the tribes of Korriban thousands of years ago. 
Yeah, he was the first Sith RE, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, they don't. It doesn't specify like BBY or ABY, obviously, but it was twenty eight hundred yep. BBY. And you learn that eventually, as this guy's giving you the sister lesson, then he went to Yavin Four, where he met Naga Sadao, the last Dark Lord of the Sith at the time. This individual was a master of Sith sorcery and Sith alchemy, and Sadao trained him and taught him everything he knew. Um, Nad, gathering this information created his own holocron among others to preserve this knowledge and then he destroyed naga sadao henceforth becoming a dark lord of the sith himself the cultist then uh, alludes to other holocrons that may be linked to this one that nad has spread or his followers have spread throughout the galaxy the unnamed devout follower this old man continues to speak and he says that Nad went on to collect many artifacts uh, as he traversed the galaxy, but one of his secret desires that was not really known to many, but only his closest circle was that he desired to learn of events that had yet to pass, that he wanted to see the truth of things before they had even occurred, and that this was a quest that he devoted secret part of his life too the cultist then starts to explain more about nad after he becomes a dark lord of the sith he explains that nad conquered onderon and ruled with an iron fist from the capital city of isis so long time ago he steeped the old culture of onderon and isis in the ways of the sith and this was his seat of power anyone that opposed him were exiled from the city um you guys I guess would know that anyone that survived exile eventually would become the beast riders and outsiders that the people know outside of Isis. So you have your your city dwellers in Isis, the people that live in cities around the planet, but those beast riders and the people that live in the jungles, those are the descendants of the people that opposed Freed Nad and left the civilized areas, including Isis on Onderon. Um and then overall, he says that Nad had a lasting effect in Dynasty and Onderon that ended, um, you know, a few hundred years ago. Um, he then says one final note, and he goes into a bit of a lesson. And the final note leads into this lesson, and the note is that Nad had learned how to sense the Force in everything around him. The, the, the follower then goes on to give the lesson that Friedenad would teach his followers how to tap into this sense and wield it and use its power. He kind of goes through a general lesson um, about how to tap into your inner self and use the force to sense things around you. And you absorb that knowledge. And once you do, you both now understand the sense force power and it is minus five xp to learn that basic power oh yeah cool so we get uh the mentor discount um, sense cool essentially yes um not Dope. done yet one second more dump yeah <laughs> one second love it Love it. Okay. Um, and finally, the lesson ends. The devout follower, you know, finishes his his lesson and walks away. And as the holocron is sort of ending its lesson, it whispers to Nazar and Gideon that it belongs to them now, and that you you are to seek the truth. And as it says this, it also states that there is always and only two, and that maybe you two are worthy. But this holocron is essentially saying that you're the owners now. And it is alluding to the fact that maybe the Sith can be restarted, because there's always two, a master and an apprentice. 
and that maybe it thinks anyway that you two are worthy to be that that two that pair and then it kind of shuts off Nazar smiles for the first time in a long time a true smile of joy and glee uh and then he looks over to Gideon and says do you see Gideon everything I've taught you everything I've told you it's true if you wish to learn more I can guide you on the path but he is right it must be two I did not doubt you Nazar but this is not ours. I don't know if you heard that. It is ours. You spoke it to us. Now, I don't mind lending it to someone who might think it is theirs for some time. It's fine with me. But whether or not it would work for them is a whole other story. What else does this even offer to us at this point? Have we not learned all of its secrets? Gideon, knowledge, an opportunity for more, more power. And through power, you will be set free, which is the way of the Sith. I am not Sith. Not yet. Gideon looks down at the holocron when you say that. Let me tell you that the ways of other Force traditions are blindingly linear and narrow. The way of the Sith is about freedom, expression, passion. I will let you think on it. But I do promise you that this is a way to more power than you could possibly imagine. And quite quickly, if you will let it. <laughs> now, one of these spots on this map I recognize from my studies. Grace to ancient and Sith space. The others, well, Coruscant I know of, but have never been. The other two are a mystery to me. Um, is there a... With that role, did... Do I need to re-roll to see if I know of any of these planets? Is there a roll I can do? Well, you definitely know Coruscant. Yeah. You have heard of Corvus. You have no idea what the hell Kreis 2 is, and you have no okay. idea what Cardelba is either. Okay. Just straight up, you wouldn't know. Yeah. And I only know, like, a very limited academic knowledge of what Kreis 2 is. I don't know <laughs> To you, Kreis 2 now. is a... A, a name out of a book. Exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. You don't even know what it looks like, nothing. Correct. I've Gosh. never... I should state for everybody watching, Nazar has never been to Sith space, but he has an academic knowledge of stuff in it. Perhaps there are archives we can visit, see if we can discover anything from these planets. Can I do a quick uh, lore check, Soma? For what? Specific for Kreis too to see if I remember anything more specific from my studies. Um, I or suppose, I but I mean, honestly, Kreis two is a hidden world forgotten to many. Yep. And as someone from Sith, Sith space, as a, a basically a Sith pureblood, you would know of Sith history. You would know of significant worlds. Yeah. But Kreis 2, you just know the name. That's all you know. Okay. And no this problem. is the first. You might be the only person in a long time and one of only a few people in the entire galaxy that actually knows this location and how to get there. The knowledge you have is incredibly valuable with this star chart and this yeah. holocron. Yeah. I'm going to look over at Gideon and say, I think we should make a trip to Kreis 2. Coruscant, we're going to have to go to anyway. But something tells me there is much to be found on long forgotten worlds that were important to people like this. Do 
Gideon, anything? Or? Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that? Yes, I said. Uh, something tells me we should go to Kreis to something valuable about long-forgotten worlds that only you and I now know of their existence. Coruscant, we shall have to go to anyway. At some point. How far is Kreis to? I've never seen that on a map. No one has seen it on a map for thousands of years. We're the only two, possibly in the entire galaxy, that know where it is. Where is it? I can only give you a general. The old Sith Empire. Near where I'm from. How do you think we convince the other two? Well, that's easy, Gideon. We just pay them. Gideon shrugs. I suppose it is that easy, isn't it? Oh, yes. With people like this, it's very simple. You hand them enough credits, they'll do whatever you want. Promise them riches, glory, what have you. Gideon nods. We didn't get paid from, that, from this job, so... Although... We can. Gideon, Gideon points to the holocron. Mm -hmm. We could, though. Yes, and they will be unable to use it as it is now ours. They will find it pointless, a pointless relic to throw in a museum. That's fine. We have marked the locations. We know where they are. We've learned everything we can from this holocron. And while a part of me likes to keep items of historical significance for my amusement, we must also consider what is necessary for our survival. You don't forget, Gideon. This is this is the item that your boss. Oh, I has. know. Yep. Oh, I know. Um, we said we were returning to Andoran, correct? Yes. You guys yes, to refuel there. and resupply. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to hold on to this. This was my objective. Keep in mind. I don't want this falling into the wrong hands. Although we are on our ship. I'm sure you understand. Yes, of course. And I smile at Gideon. Hmm? Beautiful. And then I look at him and I said, before I stand up to leave. Actually, I stand up first and I mm. walk away and then I turn around and I say, You did very well, Gideon. You should be proud. And then I walk out and go to my quarters and go to sleep. When you enter your quarters, on your desk, you see the hilt that you had set down. Yep. Try I to... would love to try and make that a thing with my broken sword. Okay. You're going to give me three back-to-back -back discipline checks. Roll me a two, three, and then a four P discipline check back-to-back-to-back. And with your force in the, uh, oh, in the okay. pool. Okay. 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 Uh, good. Mm. I got two out of three. Perfect. That's what you needed. Okay. You sit down on the bed, and you're going to go to bed, go to sleep, but you see the hilt sitting there. And as I said before, it's a, a curved reflex, reflex uh, ancient Sith uh, cross guard hilt. It's very beautiful, very, very old, but it looks immaculate. And you sit cross-legged on the bed, and you take out your your blade and you lay your blade on your lap and you close your eyes and you start to commune with the force and both the hilt and the blade bloat in front of you you open your eyes and you see both items in front of you suspended and using your hands slightly you manipulate the hilt to the far end of the blade or it could be fashioned uh, to a hilt. And you close your eyes again, 
and the hilt slides onto the end of the blade. And you open your eyes again, and you sort of move your hands gently and sort of lock the blade into the hilt. And you sort of feel with the force that they have connected. And then you reach your hand out, and you grab your sword. And you swing it, and it feels lighter. It feels different. It feels more powerful. And now, your sword has its first upgrade. So it had Hortosis before, which is pretty hardcore. Don't get me wrong, that's very strong. <laughs> um, but with this first upgrade, the encumbrance is now one. And it is essentially a curved reflex grip hilt with a ceremonial Sith cross guard on it. So encumbrance is one, and you get plus one defensive and plus one deflection while wielding the sword, plus the cortosis that it started with. And it does not use up any hard points. Not that that really matters with the sword, but you know what I mean. So now it has plus one defensive, plus one deflection, encumbrance one with cortosis. Sweet. Nice little upgrade for you. So that means I get one melee and one ranged? Yes, when you're wielding the sword. So now I have two melee defense and one ranged defense. Cool. There you go. Sick. Now your sword is upgraded and it is even deadlier than it was before. Fuck yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, then you go to bed. Gideon, do you want to do anything after that? Um, I, well, I was going to... I realized I don't have an actual communicator from my handler. I was going to call him, but I can't call him in space, right? Because I don't have an actual communicator for him. You'll have to wait till you get back to Onron. Yeah, so... No, I'm just going to take the... Take the cube. Okay. Over here. So he wouldn't be able to use the same communicator that I use to connect with the huts? He, the ship? he has a direct one-to-one -one communicator to his handler. Planetary range. But it's though. planetary okay. range. Yeah. Got so, it. yeah. All right. Um, and then um, also, one, one last thing. Uh, it's not a cube. It's a pyramid. Oh, sorry. It's a pyramid. <laughs> it is a pyramid, yeah. <laughs> My so, bad. <laughs> forget it's all, all good no problem i i'm pedantic and a nerd so you'll i'll i'll, I'll set you straight <laughs> appreciate it all right now we're back in the cockpit with Shnez and laz and l7 anything you guys i know this this was a uh, you guys have noticed the last 13 episodes nazar hasn't had an upgrade or really anything happened to his character so uh please forgive me that this was essentially pretty Nazar focused the last couple sessions, but I felt like his character uh, needed a beat, you know? So um, thank you guys for sort of taking a backseat. Not, maybe not, not getting as much, but Schnez and Laz especially for these last two sessions. So appreciate it. But we're in the cockpit with you boys. What would you guys like to talk about, do? What's going on? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just flying to Andron. I don't know any of the exposition that just happened. Right. So I have nothing. Like, Laz is just flying back. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to check if you guys wanted to RP or say anything or do anything. I mean, well, like, well, like, I, uh, yeah, I get, I'm just, there's like nothing, like, whatever. That was weird. But <laughs> glad we made it out of there. So, are we just not going to talk about this dragon that Nazar seemed to tame? I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything about weird lizard things or where Nazar is from. He's weird, special powers. I mean, you could ask him about it. This is all a bit unsettling, I believe. Yeah, it's definitely uh, 
outside of what I'm used to dealing with. I'm just curious as to this payday that they talked about for these relics, how that comes to light. They both I mean, seem very fixated on this pyramid thing that was hidden in a statue. I don't know. It, I think the only two relics that uh, came from the planet, they kind of took, right? So, I mean... I don't really care. It's not like it was uh, anything I was interested in anyway, but uh, they did say specifically to you that they'd pay you. Well, I won't see how it goes. Laz reaches, in. Laz reaches into his pocket and tosses back a thousand credit chip to... Uh, Shnez, should at least get paid something. I was part of a committee to convince you. Shnez hands the credits back. Well, I don't feel like I did too much on this one. Worst case, I got a nice little vacation out of it to see a planet I've never seen before. I will say that all of this Artifact business does intrigue me. I have not seen any of this old technology that they seem so enamored with. I would be interested in, to learn more about it. Well, I mean, uh, I think, I mean, I don't know if they're going to talk about it or not, but I'm sure that you could talk, to, you know, convince them to, uh, Teach you a few things. Well, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be back on Andoran soon enough. Figure out what the, the next step is. Yeah, so I think for me, I'm maybe a little more concerned about the politics that were happening before we left. There's another uh, there's another place to stay. We don't have to go to the looping. We got a little bit of money. You know? We can avoid politics if we want. Oh, yes. The Suez Hotel is very nice. Yeah? I've, I haven't seen it yet. Yes, I uh, understand their penthouse is being repaired. But uh, the bar is very nice in the hotel lobby. Well, it's we close, check to that main, out. close to the main shopping area in the market. We could check that out and the, uh, find out what the other two want to do. Yes. I suppose for now, it's worthwhile getting some rest. I definitely have not slept well these last few days. All right, all right. Well, I'll be up here, and, uh, you know, if you need anything, let me know. Fine. All right. Um, so you guys have your chat. Everyone does their thing. And you guys eventually get back to Onderon. You see the planet in the distance. You fly toward it. And as you get closer, you notice that there's even more ships than last time. And it just looks kind of crazy. It looks like there's almost like a blockade forming. You don't really know what's going on. It's very busy. There's ships leaving uh, the planet as well. But you guys fly through and you go down to Casalti Station and you get a landing spot. It is damn near curfew. It's getting super close to curfew as you guys finally arrive. And you check into your spot. You had mentioned that you wanted to get like fuel topped off and whatnot. Um, you're able to get queued up for uh, fueling and it's all good. Um, it, it's, there's, there's a lot of people working Casalti right now. 
for some reason. There's there's a lot of um, inbound, outbound traffic, a lot of activity going on. Um, so you're able to, up, you're able to pull excuse. someone aside. What's what's going on? I'm just like ask somebody working in this uh, the court. Yeah, this uh, person in a rush. He's trying to get by you, and you kind of step in front of him and ask what's going on. And he, as he's quickly trying to get by you, um, he just he kind of shrugs and just goes Mandos and just keeps walking. And you guys are able to exit the ship and lock it up. And um, it's going to be to top off fuel. You guys didn't use that much fuel, but it's going to be a thousand each, just to get everything topped off. You might as well, right? Um, thousand each. And you guys are able to head back to the city if you'd like. Yes, I suppose we should check in on Set and Ollie. Is that the, uh, you think that's the prudent move there? The go to see why not? <clears throat> May as well. I think the next spot on our list is to get paid for the job we just did. Will require us to go to Coruscant. Oh, so there there is payment. I think so. Um, really, uh, I don't know all the details, but uh, the words it seems you like the next seem bad to me. I think. I expect those aren't. You know, I'm just saying. You, you did say like, come to this this planet. Fly the ship there. We will pay you. Yes, yes. In due time. Didn't say when you would get paid. Relax, Laz. You'll get your money. <laughs> I mean, you guys got the things you wanted, right? Yes, but... Okay. We needed to get the things we wanted so that we could turn them in to get them. Never mind. I'm assuming you guys are having this conversation as you're walking to yes. some transport. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I can't remember. Did you guys use a speeder to get to your ship? Yes. Okay. Yes. Your speeder is there. You guys walk to the speeder having this conversation, and you see that you need to race back now to get into the city before curfew hits. So you, do you mm -hmm. guys hoof it, fucking speed back to the city? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. You guys speed back to Isis, and you see there's uh, people leaving the city, heading to Kasaltu, and a few folks also heading into Isis. You guys get there. There is extra patrol and extra guards out, um, a little bit more than last time you guys got back when things were starting to heat up. And you guys get to the gate when it's your turn. You're sitting in front of the force field. And the guard says, what's your business here? Where are you going? I'm going to uh, Schnez. What was the name of that uh, place? The Cartel. Yeah, there you go. The Ceres Hotel. Gives you a nod and the force field drops. And you guys are able to go into the city. The Sirius Hotel, when you guys get in, is far. Curfew is like going to happen in well, ten minutes. Just so let you guys. I'm know. gonna, yeah, I'm gonna ask the group. Do you actually want to go to the Rooping? That's fine. I just, I'm not going to tell him we're going there because there seems to be an issue with Mandalorians right now. Hmm. Uh, That's a good I, point. I'm not too picky on where we go. Yes, I don't have a lot of money left after the ship maintenance, but um, I don't really care where we sleep until things are topped off. Okay, I'll uh, I'll make a break for the Cirrus Hotel. Okay. Very well. All right. Um, give me a second then. Okay. So you guys um, race through the city to get to the Sirius Hotel. It's a much farther drive than just heading to the Rooping, which is closer to that gate. But it's all good. You're able to do so. You, you do arrive past curfew, um, and the hotel door is locked. 
spot when you do arrive um, and you ring the bell, uh, someone does let you in. And um, a doorman escorts you to the counter where you're able to pay for rooms. The suite is not available. No suite is available, actually. But you guys are able to get um, either a shared room for uh, 100 credits each for one night or your own individual rooms for 200 each a night. We can just do the shared room, I think. Care. Okay, everyone subtract 100 credits. You guys are able to get a shared room. You go up to the shared room. It's got a cool view uh, from the shared room of the city square. Um, it's dead down there. there. You see some guard patrols and some uh, some folks uh, patrolling the streets, but that's it. And really all that there is to do is go to bed and rest up. If that's well, then let's like do that. Do. Okay. Uh, you guys rest, get rid of one wound and all your strain each. Okay, beautiful. Um, you guys get a good night's sleep, and uh, you wake up in the morning around you know seven, eight in the morning. And uh, what do you guys do? Um, how long is our ship going to take to get topped off? You guys have a few hours to kill. Okay. Um, I want to wake up uh like a couple hours before everybody i want to go down to the desk uh and ask how much just a single room is real quick in the morning 200 credits okay i'm gonna buy one and go in it and try to call my handler okay you try to call your handler but do not get a response uh i try over the course of like a couple hours but if i still get no response i'll go back to the room yeah it's kind of weird gideon hmm. is actually a little confused um he quark always answers but not he, right now he doesn't hmm. yeah um Weird. Maybe I'll just. Mm. Yeah, I'll go back to the room. Go back to the room with everybody. It's fine. All right. Is everyone awake when I come back? Or still sleeping? I mean, you said a couple hours. So I assume yeah. we're all awake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you guys are all kind of chilling in the room. It's about, I don't know, 10. You know, lunch is about to hit in about an hour, hour or two. Um, you guys have to wait you know, two, three hours for the ship. So you guys could go downstairs and get food or something. Right. Do we want to check on, on anybody while we're here? I just didn't want to head there at night. You never know what kind of craziness is happening. No, I think that's the safe move. If you want to go back and check the them to this morning, I'm sure sudden alley would welcome us. It's, uh, what do you think, Nazar, Gideon? If we would like to check in on them, we can. I don't really care. I mean, they'll they'll be able to handle themselves. I'm just, you know, curious as to what the next step is while we're here. I don't think that... We really have anything else to do with them, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, the planet seems to be going a little haywire with Mandalorians. We could always uh, help them out. There was money to be made by they taking might have down. Some intel. Uh, yeah, you know, we made. We also made money getting rid of the hut. Maybe we'll make money getting rid of Mandos. You don't know. Yes, maybe. All right. Fine. If, if this is something you two would like to do, I will I will follow you. I don't know. I'm just throwing out suggestions. I mean, where else are we going to go? Coruscant? 
that's not exactly uh have you, ever, have you ever heard of the planet Kreis 2? Have I, I ever heard of that planet? <laughs> Literally no one but like five people in existence right now have heard of it. You definitely have not heard of Kreis no, 2. Well, You're like, what the no, fuck I, is that? <laughs> I've never heard of your made-up planet. Um, Are we in the room right now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um... Uh, I mean, why the fuck not? I'm gonna take the holocron out, place it in front of everybody. I'm gonna gather everyone around in a little huddle, a little circle. Ooh. I'm gonna put the holocron down. I'm gonna put the. I'm. Sh- I'm gonna put the star map on it. I'm gonna show them. Yeah. So you gather on a table. You set the star chart down, mm-hmm. and you take the holocron out of your pocket. And as you get relatively close to the star chair with the holocron as you're about to set it on the table the holocron actually just flings itself like a, like it's magnetized mm-hmm. to its spot over ambria and I, and the f- other four planets start to glow yeah getting tan kind of snaps back like I wasn't expecting it to do that <laughs> hmm. um and kind of positions it and shows everybody well wow. both These are where I would like to go next. I'm not going to drag you to them now. I'm not going to force you. But I figure you do something for me, I do something for you, you do something for me. We just go back and forth on this until we get bored and find something else to do. You did something for me. What what would you guys like to do? I look at Schnez. I'm just waiting for him to respond. I'm asking you too, and I kind of snap in front of your face, Snaz. Or Laz. Whoa there, buddy. All right. You know my general gist of things. I'm waiting to see what Schnaz wants to do. Mm-hmm. I look at Schnaz. What are you saying? Is this? Where there are the artifacts that we were looking for? Is this where... I don't know what's now? here. I don't know Quite what's simply here. put, yes, there are more artifacts on these planets. I would love to visit them. I'm not going to stop you from looting them. But I would like to learn things from these planets, and I believe that there are things for me to learn. All right, mm-hmm. how, does this, how does this advance our cause, Gideon? I'm, I'm dead staring you right now. <laughs> uh, Nazar looks over and he says, Once again, ancient worlds that haven't been... Well, some of them have not been seen in millennia. Who knows what untold riches could be there. Oh, it's the line you used to get us to Ambria. I yes, feel Ambria, though. We're rich, though. Right and now. we found this. I, I look at the gun in your holster and I say, you did that's not, not come away empty-handed. That's, that's not the gun. And I pull out the broken gun that's in my <laughs> smugglers. Well, this thing that doesn't work that well. Sure. We'll you get can it have fixed. It. You can have it. And I toss it to Nazar. I look at it and I say, uncivilized. <laughs> I throw it on the table. Uh... I kind of just look over and I say, yes, it's broken, but it can be fixed, and I do think it will be helpful. Listen, I'm just saying, I just, Gideon's at least mentioning quid pro quo here, right? Yes, I, of course we will help you in your endeavors. I mean, we're saying our endeavors are making money, and we have not made any. We have made quite a few credits together one mission not providing money immediate credits immediately does not mean we failed or did not or i did not uphold my end of the bargain well, allow me to find a buyer or more information on what can be done with this holocron give me more time Snez, am i wrong or did they not say there will be there will be artifacts for you to have and sell there you will make I, money for going. I did not. Has got several meals out of the entire <laughs> situation. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Schnez just kind of leans over the star chart for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he kind of studies the glowing planets. Are any of them anywhere near hut space, current hut space, and or Kubindi at all? All right, let's take a look at the galaxy map, my friends. Yeesh. So, Coruscant, of course, right in the middle. is where are you? Right there. This is one of the glowing places. Mm hmm. Another one is the Kreis 2 one is in this region of space, but it's not marked on this map. Yes. Over here. So it would be interesting. Kreis kind of near Korriban and Ashes Re, somewhere in that neighborhood. Where hold on one second. And Zyost and all that. One it's second. in Dark Star space. Give me a second. I know the location. Second. Pretty sure it's an R5, but I could be wrong. It might be an R4. It would be, Kreis 2 would be like somewhere. Like right here. Mm. Right. Floating around out there. there. Yeah. And then Between. Cardelba is also extremely close to this planet as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's somewhere like... I don't know why it's not on this map. It's kind of weird. There are ancient I want to go to the Sith worlds. But it would be like <laughs> somewhere over here. Can we go to Lego world? <laughs> <laughs> it's Iego? <laughs> no, I want to go Lego world. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then... Corvus. It's in Mandalorian. Space is in Mando space, yes. It's I believe it's near Navarro and Mandalore and all that shit. Mm. Cor here's Terrace. Mm -hmm. Corvus is like shit. Where is it? One sec. Basically, like a triangle. So to answer your question, no, they're not near Kubindi or Hut Space. Yep. So realizing that, Schnez is going to kind of lean back away from the star chart. And I feel like there's much going on on this planet, and might be some easy credits to be made. I'd like to take part of the morning while we're waiting for the ship to be refueled to try to get a little bit of intel on what's actually happening at the palace. Gideon nods. Like I said, I will absolutely help you with what you want to do on this planet. How do we feel about visiting these planets at some point? I don't see why not at some point. Yes, there's an adventure to be had in this wide galaxy. Yeah. Laz? I'm just here for the ride, I guess. You know, <laughs> there's no real payday, so I might as well just enjoy the uh, the post. <laughs> I'm just sure, right? size audibly. <laughs> he rolls like his very, fucking very, eyes. Yeah. He's shaking his head. <laughs> hey, you know... When I, say I, when I say I'm your fucking fingertips, guy. <laughs> when I say I'm gonna pay somebody, I pay him. That's all I know. Gideon, what? there is a potential buyer, is there not? You don't have to go into specifics. Yes. Yeah. Potential. Like there I you said, go. I need time to get actual answers. I'm um, just saying we could keep we could keep doing this where like I'm just your personal chauffeur. Who works for free and, uh, you know, flies you around to your little you were, adventures. You were paid for the last mission. Relax with this. If we have a buyer, yeah. you will get a cut. It is that simple. You will be paid. I won't hey, forget just... this tantrum, but you will be paid. <laughs> oh, 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 this is a tantrum. If I was like, hey, I don't really want to go to Ambria or I didn't want to go to... Coruscant, I think I'd see a tantrum then, wouldn't I? 
I don't want to go to I don't want to go to Coruscant to be honest. Can we make that last? <laughs> <laughs> but you know oh, what I'm we saying. Need to get yes, his money. absolutely, Laz. I I'm being I'm being unreasonable. I know. I mean, I'm just saying. There's a there's a certain quid pro quo, right? Like I was saying earlier, poor Laz, uh, poor Laz and Schnez here, just hanging out. Doing whatever you guys tell us to do, and uh, we don't feel. I don't. Know, I mean, where's where's the the? I mean, uh, you said you gotta sell these things. This this one little relic that's gonna make up for everything. This one little relic, you know not of its value. These are priceless. Okay. The right buyer, you could easily make thousands of credits. Tens of thousands, even, with the right buyer. All right, well, get on the horn and find your buyer. I'll be right here. <laughs> I'm working on well, it. Well, in the meantime, if you would like to make some extra credits, which wouldn't be bad, because now let me count what I have, and I pull out of my pocket 37 credits, and I say, it weighs on my mind <laughs> as well. Yes, well, I wasn't the one that looked at the mercenaries and said, hey, I can pay you to do a job, and then not able to pay him to do the job, right? That was you two. Very well. nods. Very fair. You will be paid. Just then. In the meantime, yeah, yeah. while we are waiting, shall we go get some credits so we can pay you for your job? Well, I look at Schnez. What do you want to do? Fucking bastard! I swear to God. I love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel like I need a little time. This is all a bit much for me. Let me go see if I can work some contacts at the market and understand what's happening here at the palace yet. I feel like that is a sensible intermediate. Well, and he looks at Nizar. I'll you figure out how to sell this thing and get some credits. Taking on comms. I, uh, I just look at him and I say, very well. So I'm assuming you guys would probably leave the hotel room now? Yep. Okay. You guys... I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave a little late as if I'm, like, lost something and can't find it. And once everybody's out, I'm gonna try to call, what's his name again? Just once. Yeah, everyone leaves the room, and as soon as the door clicks shut, you try to call again, but you again don't get an answer. Okay. And after a couple of seconds, I'll come back out and catch up. Yeah, the door, the elevator door is about to close, but um, they see you come out of the, the room and they hold the door for you. And you walk nice. on board. Four of you go down the elevator into the lobby, and as you're walking across the lobby, you see a special report on. The hollow net begin. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people in the lobby stop walking. People at the bar sort of hush and they look up at the screen. The bartender stops working. The bellman stops working. Everyone's sort of enamored. And you guys head over and you see the palace steps on the hollow net. You see an individual walk up to a pedestal at the base of the stairs. A man approaches the pedestal and someone at the bar says, ah, oh, that's Officer Frenrick. He's Royal Guard. What the hell's going on? You guys overhear that being said. And then Frenrick speaks. He addresses a, a growing crowd. Uh, in the square there, near the front of the palace where the stairs end. And Frenric says, Dear citizens of Isis, there are traitors among us in our beautiful city. Even our own queen has given us the cold shoulder. 
I'd like to announce today that the Queen herself is under house arrest, can no longer leave the palace. The royal family is being tracked down to be arrested. And people that have supported a coup within our city, well, they must be dealt with. We must stand together as citizens of Isis here in Onderon. And if the royal family fails us, we must do something about it. If our citizens stand against us, we must do something about it. And the camera kind of shifts next to him. And on their knees, you see Set and Ollie next to Frenric with guards flanking them. And the guards pick them up and push them forward to a block that is in front of the pedestal. Said and Ollie look at each other. They look a little beat up, they look a little haggard. And the giant crowd is watching. And he says, these traitors will be dealt with today. And any others that you find will be dealt with. For Isis will not fall to outside forces. The queen will not sell us out. And we will stand against tyranny together. Won't we? And everyone cheers in the square. And then he nods to the guards. And they step forward. And they each take out a ceremonial axe. Raise it above their heads. And remove Set and Ollie's heads from their necks. Ooh. And they are executed in the square. Azar audibly says, or whispers to, uh, to the group, well, there goes that plan. And the royal guard, Frenric, says, let this be a lesson to all of you. Stand together because these two, who are newcomers to our city, not true Onderanians, well, I suppose they didn't love us the way we love each other, as citizens of Isis. And for that, well, let's just say betrayal will always be met like this, and he gestures toward their, their heads and their bleeding necks. And he says, be vigilant, report any treachery you see in the streets. For one day we would like to go back to regular life. No curfews, no increased patrols, no hut gangsters or Mandalorian gangsters in our streets. And we will achieve this, but only together can we do this. Thank you all. And he gives him a nod and people cheer him on as he walks back up the steps. And the bodies and the heads are taken away. The kid's hmm. not there, right? No. All right. And everyone's at the bar and in the lobby sort of whispering to each other as the heads were removed from the necks there was gasps from some of the people in the hotel and it's kind of a somber weird mood in the uh, the lobby bar as people kind of shuffle on and get back to what they were doing and the broadcast goes dark on the screen I lean over to the group and say, "Well, this is turning into a totalitarian shithole." So I think what do you we think should leave. What do you think happened to his kid? I don't know, but we gotta find him. Yeah, let's go. Ugh. Fine. Yeah, I get. I I start leaving the uh, uh, hotel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I follow. Intention to go to the rooping. Yep. Okay. So you guys leave the Cirrus Hotel. You guys get into your speeder. And all four of you go to the rooping? Yeah. Okay. As we get close to the rooping, Schnez will kind of address the group. I don't think that it is wise for us to roll straight up, given what just happened. I think we go around a little more subtle, but try to find Horus. Good point, maybe good point. Park, maybe we park just a little bit away, a block or so. All right, all right. You know, that's yeah. what I'll do. Okay. So you guys drive to the rooping, or close to it, and you park the speeder, you know, a couple buildings down. There's really no activity uh, that, that seems weird at the rooping. Just a regular, mm-hmm. seems like a regular day. Yeah. Does it seem like there's anybody that might be paying attention to who comes and goes as we kind of get close to the main entrance? Um, Not at all. Is there anybody actually going in? No. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to look look around to see if there's like people look watching it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if there's like any like do a lap. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna like. I'm not going in. I'm not entering the rooping. I'm just going in. I'm like seeing if there's like any spotters out. Pretty much. Yeah, you walk around and you don't notice anything weird. It's you well, know. It's, no, no, uh, no perception or anything. No, you don't even need. You can clearly walk around the building. Um, you don't see. I mean, you can you can roll if you want. I'm not looking at the rooping. I'm looking at the other buildings. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and roll me a two P perception. Two blue. Yeah, you walk around the building and you check um, other buildings, alleyways. Uh, you look at balconies and windows and the roofs of adjacent buildings, but you don't see anything out of the ordinary. It's, it's kind of empty around here right now. No one has left the rooping or gone in either. I'm going to go towards the back because I remember that being the kind of closed off. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to enter the rooping that way. I'm going to look for anything crazy. Yeah, so you guys are at the back of the rooping then? Yep. Yes. Okay. You get up to the gate, and it's actually not locked, and you're able to access this back parking lot area. Okay. When we get in, I want to close it. It's like a gate we opened. Okay. Check in the store. Is it uh good to go? Oh, uh, it not trapped. Not oh, you know, <laughs> it's unlocked and not trapped. Oh yeah, yeah, no traps unlocked. <laughs> yep. You guys can enter the mm-hmm. kitchen if you guys want. Mm-hmm. All right. Does everyone enter the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. As you guys enter the kitchen, and the door closed behind you. You're all walking through when suddenly the office door opens up and Horace walks out. Office door immediately. The office door immediately. Closes. The office door Sorry. closes behind him, and he turns and sees you guys, and he's kind of surprised to see you guys in the kitchen. And he says, "What the hell are you guys doing in here?" Uh, they just killed your father, and uh, you know, on t- on uh, the hollow net. So we were sneaking in to see if you were okay. What the hell are you doing? He stares at you when you say that. And he leans on the door to the office and he says, I didn't expect them to do that this morning. I didn't see. Was it on the hollow net? My gun comes out uh, as quick reaction. What do you mean you didn't expect them to do it? And I'm pointing at him now. He says, uh, What the hell are you doing? Lower your weapon in here. What the. F- the fuck are you doing? No, what are you doing? Why? What is going on here? I don't really, I don't trust anybody. The only two people I knew on this planet are dead. What's going on? You talk now. 
or bad uh, things happen. We knew this was a possibility. That's Gideon, why we gave them the option of literally, leaving. Literally the one time nobody wants you to chill out, you're calm. All I'm right? Being calm for his sake and it seems for your sake. Let me do what I do, Gideon. I'm not stopping you. I'm just saying think. Anyway. Of course it's like, kid. what the hell is wrong with you guys? You're holding the gun to me. You guys are bickering in my kitchen. What the hell? Put the gun down and let's talk. And he, and he gestures for you to follow, and he walks out to this area over here. He sits, when he walks out, I lean over to Laz. If he tries anything, we'll calm? fucking kill him. Yeah, but you don't think he's a little too calm for this situation? Oh, I agree. It he's, does. Either, he's either in shock or he's up to something. We'll find out. He sits in this chair and gestures for you guys to sit at this table. I said, here. I will stand. Thank you. Yeah, I stand here. Oh, I'm sitting. I stand right here. <laughs> so you guys are going to, he's sitting here. You guys are standing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. My arms are crossed. Uh, I'm, I'm like sitting on the, you know, like the edge of the stage. Just looking at him. He is sitting at this table, and you see that he has a communicator in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting calmly, and he says, Actually, you, I'm going to eat those words. Mm -hmm. Everyone roll me a 2P perception check. One black. 2P, oh, one black. You're two blue. 2P, one black, two blue. Extrain, I assume. No, you don't have to. Oh. Okay. Schnez and Gideon, you notice that no one else does, but the two of you notice that he has a communicator in his hand. Is he, like, making an effort to hide it? Sort of, kind of. Okay. He's, he's not being obvious about it, but you can see that he's got something in his grip that it's a communicator. Yeah. You guys stop, and you're standing before him, and he says... You love making this place your your home. You eat the food here. You drink here. You sleep in beds for free. And now you don't want to sit when you're invited to sit. Wait, they, wait, wait. You guys gave them rooms for free? I paid a thousand credits to sleep here. You got a nice room, I thought. No, I slept in the dirt. Uh, <laughs> I don't even... What are you talking, talking about? about Listen, kid. Why are you so calm? Also, what is that for? And I'm pointing to the communicator in his hand. He looks at you, Gideon, and then to Laz, and he says, Why am I so calm? Well, you ever feel like you had a weight off your shoulders? You ever feel like uh, you've achieved freedom for the first time in your life? Yes, and yes, I have felt that way before. Many times. And he says, good. And he points and he says, I'm, good, good. Because guess what? I'm going to double aim and shoot the communicator. Cold shot. It's like in the in the grip of his hand and you... I mean, then you his don't, hand, you don't his hand. Shnez and Gideon see it. You don't. Well, I pointed he said it. He pointed it out. Yeah, oh, okay. pointed yeah, it out. Okay. So what's that for? Okay. Yeah. Um, Are you sure you want to do that? Called shot? Yeah. All right, roll I'm gonna, it. All right, so that's one blue, right, for the called shot? One blue? No, no. the called shot right. is makes it harder. It's one two blue. black? All right. or, no, hold on, hold on. We'll figure this out. Yes. It's on the sheet, how to aim at something specific. Do I not, and I don't get the blues from the aims, right? Or from one aim? You, you no, you aim. still get your blues. It just is a harder shot. And I don't know if it adds more purples or adds more um, blacks. I'm trying to figure that out. Sorry. Um, but there is there's a rule for this. Um, so it's going to be... Wants... I'm pretty sure it's 1P, 1 black, because it's a call shot. It's just a black, right? Uh, it's it... two sat back dice. It's two black. 
Two black. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. one P, two black. And you can aim as well. Yep. Okay. So how this works is you do shoot it, and it actually, you hit his hand, and it does mm -hmm. damage. He takes... Eight damage doesn't make sense for a called shot. Actually, I get... Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to... I. It's fine he's to gonna, not... He's going to take one damage, and... I mean, maybe he shot with some hit. But I actually got one more blue. Because uh, I have... Uh, the one if nobody else is gone yet, I get an extra blue. Yeah. Yep. Quick, uh, like, quick oh, reaction. Well, I mean, for whatever. this, for the sake of this, you do one damage to him and you do destroy the communicator. Huh. But, How does I he mean, react to that? Yeah, so he jumps up and he puts his back against the wall. The communicator is destroyed and he's like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? What the fuck? I'm, gonna, I'm calling for help. I didn't expect Don't anything move. like this. Not anymore, you're not. Oh, Who was that too? You felt a weight off your shoulders because your father's dead? Sit back down. He stands and he says, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. Is that what you want? He said, yeah. my father's been holding me back for a long time. You think I joined that gang because I was some scared, desperate kid trying to, you know, find some companionship on a new planet? No, I thought you joined because you were an idiot. Unfortunately, Horace, that's exactly why I think you joined them. That's fine. But I'll tell you why I joined. Because it was damaging to the people holding me back. Said, Uncle said he was a good guy. But my dad, he always tries to protect me. He always tries to shelter me from the galaxy. And it's not going to... Well, it obviously didn't work. And going forward, I'm on my own now. This bar, well, according to the local government, this bar belongs to me now. The Rooping is no more. This is the Galar Galley now. Said, Ollie, may they rest in peace, but this place belongs to me. Did you sell them out for, your, for the bar? <laughs> the bar? Not just the bar. Far more than that. As Far more than that. And I just look at it, and you were telling me to be calm. Nah, do what I mean. I look at I look at Horace and I say, <laughs> quite frankly, I didn't expect you to have the gumption to pull something like this off. And quite frankly, I didn't think I was going to have the opportunity, but I was approached by someone that gave me an offer that I just couldn't refuse. And In let's be steps. honest here. What you saw today on the hollow net is just the beginning. Those two, in the eyes of this local government, were traitors to ISIS and its citizens. That's why they were executed. And you've shot at me, and because of that, you are now going to be enemies of ISIS Listen, and the government here. Kid, kid <laughs> who's going to tell the government if you don't walk out of here? And with that, now shut up he's... and sit down. He is going to make a run for these doors. Um, yeah, he's just. I guess we just shoot him again, right? Like, Well, let's see. Uh, so. No, actually, none of you are going to do any of that. I am going to use the force to yank him to me. Okay. So he tries to run for the door. And mm -hmm. I try and use force move to lift him off the ground and move him towards me. Okay. What's my... Yikes. One Thank second. You. Second. <laughs> Last. Guess I'm shooting him. <laughs> Listen, I've Still literally your chance. I'm just throwing this out here. Laz has been on point since hey, we got you... back there. He was like, let's not go to the rooping. That's a bad idea. Yeah. All right. I didn't I, know. Called, I immediately <laughs> called that this kid was was on, on to something. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, and everybody else is telling no, no. And this uh, is not everybody pay else. Oh, this is why you pay last for information like this. All right. Put a bit of the dough. Come on, man. Yeah. Okay. Just a kid. <laughs> so Welcome. he's going to roll his discipline, and you're going to roll your discipline, and let's see how it plays like out. I'm going to use one. a destiny point. 
Okay. No, 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 we yeah. have zero. It should be zero no, five don't. right now. No, we no, have don't. He used no. multiple. We have. Yeah. We should have one. It should be four to one. I yeah, accidentally two, put an extra in the four. pool. What? Oh, really? Yeah. What are you talking about? No, That's why it's six. One. It should be he, five. He no, I know, but the total amount of destiny should only be five. Yeah, add up to three, five, not six. Three, I accidentally hit roll oh, destiny yeah, yeah, during yeah. one of my turns. Yeah. yeah. So I just okay. use the destiny point. My I'm going to discipline. also and upgrade my discipline. <laughs> okay, so. that's fine. All right, go ahead and roll. All right, hold on. Let me use my destiny. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to upgrade my discipline Let's one more time. And this is just a flat roll. Opposed. Okay. Damn, buddy. Okay. Get fucked. Now you. Now can I got to roll you want my force. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the diff? He's in short range, so it's one p. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I he runs for the doors and I say, I don't think so. And I lift my hand up and his legs leave the ground and he's floating in the air and I start bringing him back to me. So you're not throwing him? I'm not throwing him. I'm you didn't even really move. need to use. Oh, okay. I thought you were doing like the force throw. You didn't even have to do that with that. Nope. Yeah. So you drag him towards you. Yeah. And he's freaking out. And he's like kind of like screaming for help. And I uh towards you. I draw my sword. My new flashy sword. Horace, uh, shut up. And I say. Oh yes. We deal with traitors much in the same way as your government. We do not tolerate them, we do not abide them. If you are going to make me the enemy of this state, I just can't have that. And then I'm going to fucking run him through. Okay. Shit. You kill him. Uh, yeah, I straight up kill him. I just look, Nazar, we could have got used him for information. It was a little quick, even for, by my standards, but All he's of dead. you are cowards. He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> cowards. I'm the one that called this. I called this. Yes. Yo, calm down. I All have no last. need for sniveling bastard traitors who are just going to lie to us and give us nothing. Laz, next time you're going to pull a gun on somebody, shoot them. He tried. You stopped him. No, he pulled a gun on him and said, what are you doing? Next time you pull a gun on someone, shoot them. No. Yeah. Yes, Listen, fair enough. Generally, the threat of, of pain is worse than the actual pain. All right? You know, in my oh, experience... I was not looking to inflict pain, my friend. No, obviously you weren't. I'm searching his body. Yeah, as you're as you're talking, in my experience, usually blood you makes them think a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need to get his body, destroy any videos in here, and get the hell out of here. Where's their stupid office at? It's back here. I lead you to it. Should we Was just burn this place to the ground? Anything on his body? Ah, uh, no, nothing of nothing of consequence. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gideon's walking around uh, over comms. Am I burning this place to the ground? Uh, not yet, at least. That's Schnez Nazar. Do you want to burn the looping? And I'm, I'm going on I'm, the, the computer and trying to find out any information I can. I don't don't care to be fair, room. it's what Dell would have wanted. Yeah, that's a fair point. He hated this place. <laughs> I'm and searching every room. Extra attention to this crowd's left. As you guys are doing this, there's a knock on the door here. I don't give a shit. Hold on, I walk up to the door. Is, Del, uh, is his body still there? It's right uh, here. His body's over here. Hide his body. Somebody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I dragged it upstairs. All right. In the process. I, uh, I'm on the. I, okay, you're on the computer. Uh, let him do his computer thing. And, or do you want me to do the door thing first? Door first. Oh, yeah. Okay. I say, <clears throat> this is who is it? Open up. It's the guard. We heard screaming in here. Is everything all right? Yes. Ollie cut himself in the kitchen and was crying like a baby. Or Not Ollie. Ollie's you know who I mean. What's his name? The, his Horace. kid. Horace. Horace. Yes. I don't remember. And then I uh, opened the door for the guard. <laughs> Yeah, the guard, uh, 
he steps in. Ollie, Horace, I get their names mixed up too, but that young kid, Horace, he owns this place now. Well, as of today, anyway. Yes, that doesn't mean he knows what he's doing. Hmm. Is he here? He was washing he? tables the last time. I don't know. He ran out of here in a tizzy. You can see there's a bunch of blood on the floor. He cut himself pretty good. He walks over and he looks at the blood over here and he says, that's quite a bit of blood. What did he cut himself with? A vibro knife? Something like that. He was trying to get through the shank of a rather large piece of Pacobi. He missed and cut his... What did they call it? His femoral artery? I'm not sure. Alright, roll me a deception check. It's gonna be... Uh... A discipline... Uh, destiny win. Huh? I'm gonna have to use that last <laughs> testing or I'm yeah, fucked. It's, so. it's 3P. 3P deception. Uh, okay. We have one more after this. That's fine. I suck at deception, too. This is going to be interesting. Uh, 3P. Three. Holy I shit. do get one blue for uh, one of my talents. So. Oh. Wow, lucky oh. you. He kind of shrugs, and uh, the communicator in his ear kind of buzzes, and he uh, puts his finger to his ear, and you hear him say a couple words, and he said, all right, well... Tell the kid to be careful. He's going to be running this place. He can't be cutting himself on a damn yes. knife cutting up a Kobe. I know. Um, the rooping will probably be closed until further notice, until he can get that sorted out. I imagine that will be quite the recovery. He nods, and uh, the guard says, uh, well, uh, Frenric sends his regards. He really is a fan of Horace. And uh, yes. he gives you a nod. And then what is, I actually don't know this because I guess I'm not nerdy enough, but what is like a standard Mandalorian? Uh, uh, Al might know this. Like a term to say goodbye or farewell or until next time. Do you happen to know, Al? No, but like if you say like anything like, like in honor or like, you know, in strength. That that'll be fine. Strength be with you. Or yeah, something. yeah, in Mandalorian, like that, yeah. he says something like, you know, strength until I have strength until I see you again, or something like that. In Mandalorian, yeah. And uh, he gives you a nod and he walks out. As soon as he walks out, I close the door. I lock it. I run back to the office. I say the guards are now speaking Mandalorian. I don't think we should stay. No, no, lock the other doors. I'm gonna get on this computer and see what what they got here. Yes, and I go and I lock the front door and uh, the back door as well, and the uh, cargo area. Okay. Um, give me a 2P computer check, one block. All right, so you can easily access the computer, and you see the... Um, the camera footage from the last couple of days and you fast forward through some shit and then you see uh guards arriving with horace opening the door for them and them coming inside and you see them crossing the room uh, the main room across the stage and going into the kitchen and then escorting said nolly out in cuffs and shackles, shackles. With is there any audio no audio it's right. a, it's a like shitty cameras as well. It's like black and white, and uh, oh. there's no audio. And you see them being walked out in shackles, and Horace shaking the hand of Frenric, the royal guard that you saw speaking, um, in you know earlier on the Hollow Net, and uh, they all leave, and then Horace is left alone, and Horace has a smile on his face as he walks back toward the office. And then you fast forward some more and then you guys see you guys arriving and what just happened with you guys. So you can delete it or there's I'm going to record the arrest. And I'm going to delete us. All right. And I'm going to shut the cameras off so that they stop recording. Mm hmm. Uh, and I'm going to kind of take a look around this office to see if there's 
a secret stash or something. Yeah, so you do find... Um, give me a, a 3P perception. Okay, it takes you a minute. Um, but you do find under the desk, there's like a false side of the desk and you push it aside and inside you find uh, a chit, a credit chit. And you're assuming this belongs to said, right? Um, but it has uh, 8,000 credits on the chit. This is like his savings. Well, it doesn't belong to said anymore. He's dead. Right. Seth's dead, Seth's baby. dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your payday. Now let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's the body, are... by the way? It's upstairs. It's upstairs. upstairs in one of the rooms. Got it. Um, I'm gonna come back downstairs uh, and on the comms again. Am I burning this place down? Uh, probably... and I'm just standing in the middle now. Probably not. There's guards close by. I would assume that they yeah. would see the smoke. We'll be off world before they even come back to check on him. I told them they would be closed for a few days. Time's it? It's like uh, midday at this point. Yeah, probably. midday, like one o'clock, yeah. something like that. Over cops, mm -hmm. do we want to leave this place like this? Like, not the whooping. I mean, Andoran. We like, have no choice. We will be enemies of the state within a matter of days. God only saw you. I have no... Yes, but he knows who I travel with. They're not stupid. I mean, it's not a real guard. There are docking man. records of you and Schnez and uh, Gideon all, all right. coming with me. Here's here's the new plan, all right? We take the ship, we go off to the, the forest base. The we could start the, the forest base, the, 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 hut, the hut landing spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. And we could land the ship there. And uh, we can start, I don't know, disrupting shit here. Mm. You said one for you, one for me. I understand. That's a bit risky. Also, we should deal with the body. It's quite then. small and designed for a shuttle, not a ship. Well, if you want to stay on planet, we need to deal with the body. It right, might be well, uh, that now that we are enemies of the state, we might have a potential alliance brewing with the Beast Riders out in the wilderness. Maybe we can work with them. Bring the body in the kitchen. Schnez, what do you think? Hey, I go upstairs. I just start dragging the body. I think this has become incrementally more dangerous for us. Yeah, yeah. True. Somebody should mop up the blood. I don't see how this yes, ends. Yes, yes. So Nazar uh, literally gets a mop bucket out. It's <laughs> filling it with hot I, water and soap. I'm going to carve up the kid. I feel like burning this place is much easier, but you do you. I'm not helping you with this. No, I'm going to butcher him up and I'm going to make uh, oh, dear I'm going to make a Kobe out of him. Oh, I, have, I have a brilliant idea. I've already convinced the guards that he is inept and doesn't know what he's doing. We could start a kitchen fire and leave the body in here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, all right, all right, that's that's fine, I guess. I was going to say, like, we could also, like, butcher him and feed him to the guard, because fuck that. Well, you know, I like where your mind's at. Um, that is I don't wonderfully know. Just, terrible. Just, everything's kind of... Could we come and unglued here? Yes, I know. It's going to dash really quickly, but um, we have to think quickly and get the hell out of here. I don't Bye. think sticking around and creating more trouble is the way to get us out of this. I think leaving this planet to proverbial dust would might might be the safest for all of us. All right, mop up the blood that's not in here. All right, I push the mop bucket out onto the floor and start mopping. I will cut. The uh, where the femoral artery would be, and then wrap it. Yes. Right, and then uh, we uh, we'll start a grease fire in the back. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. All this takes you guys 
<coughs> about an hour to accomplish cleaning, really cutting up the body properly, whatever it is you want to do, setting everything up. Maybe not an hour, maybe like 30 minutes, but you do all your preparations and you, when you guys are ready to go, you can start the fire and just head out the back. That's the yeah. plan. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. That's what we do. We're getting our speeder. We get out of here. As you guys are all in your speeder driving away, um, you hear a distant little boom and you see some smoke start to billow into the sky, but you guys are blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks away at this point. And as you are speeding through the city, you see some people kind of duck down as there's the boom and people pointing at the smoke as you guys all look at each other and you speed down the street heading who knows where in the streets of Isis as the rooping starts to burn down. And that will be the end of episode 14 of Star Wars Shattered Frontiers. Damn. That was a crazy Eesh. fucking session. Wow. <laughs> that was a session. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. You guys know how it goes. Chat, it's time to vote. We're going to vote for who the session MVP is for tonight. Here is the poll. Bam, bam, bam. Please, oh, that sucks. Please go ahead and vote for who the MVP is tonight. I'm going to go ahead and we should all just vote anyway because we're going to have to. Yep. I'm going to vote for, let's see here. Gideon and Dix. Let's see, Nazar and Gideon, it was kind of their, their session tonight. Um, I know who I'm voting for. I voted. I think I need to vote for Nazar overall. Actually, I don't know. It's close between Gideon and Nazar. Hmm. That was Laz. He voted. He wanted to cut the body up. <laughs> hmm. Fucking Laz. It, because I'm gonna it's, cut, it's, I'm cut the body. <laughs> it's tied between Gideon and Nazar. Because it's tied, and Nazar won this. Uh, for this session, I'm going to vote for Gideon this time. Listen, you got to get rid of the body somehow, right? Yeah, no, I voted for fun. Laz personally because I was just like that last part was just so the damn last good. part was great. That yeah. was great. Actually, Laz has more votes now. It's yeah, three to two. Yeah, nice. all right. To Laz. Any shit, Laz. any final votes, chat? Anyone else in the party that hasn't voted? Get it in mm -hmm. now. Vote now or forever hold your vote until next week. Go ahead, go ahead. Going once, going twice. Laz, Morton Salt, good sir. Al, you are our, you are our MVP for session 14. You get a free destiny point next week, good sir. You all get 15 experience as well, which is very exciting. And don't forget, um, our two Force users, Nazar and Gideon, now understand... Uh, the basics of the sense force power, and it is minus five XP to learn that power. For me, it's minus ten because I'm special. So it's free. <coughs> what's well, the, what's I, the base cost? Ten. Ten. It's and all. I already have. I have a built-in uh, mentor discount. So how that's going to work is if you ever just are going to get a free basic power it, at minimum, it's going to cost you five experience, no matter. Okay, what. I like that. That's yeah. okay. Yes, sir. I am cool with that. So no matter what, the lowest it can go, 5 XP for a force power. Sick. All right, cool. Beautiful. Um, holy shit, that session was awesome. <laughs> so much shit went down. Wow. Um, well done, gentlemen. That was very fun. Chat, thank you guys for watching. I think this was our longest session, if I'm not mistaken, for this campaign which is great. Um, everyone is good to go to play next Monday, right? July 17th. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. I believe so. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Pending nothing changes. We will be live at 7 PM at PT next week on Monday. And we'll be live with episode 15 of star Wars shattered frontiers. This has been episode 14. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely week. Have a good night. Peace out. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.
goodbye.